Uh, I'll go into this right now. So I'm starting now officially, right? What's going on, guys? I'm gonna. This is part two for the Brian Moveless run through. I ended it off at this move, and I go based on the RB Norway Moveless. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is this. But before that, let me recap what I remember from last time. I don't remember everything. So to, what I was just saying is his one jab seems to track really well to his right side, right? I'll have the AI do it just to show you. See, they step left, it hits them. For some reason, stepping away from his one jab hurts. So that's one reason you're gonna wanna go to your right, just one reason. Um, I tested this with Lily last time on stream and she couldn't sidestep. I didn't test it with Kazumi or like Lucky Chloe. I think Lucky Chloe has a decent sidestep. I'm not sure about that. So that's one thing to know about Brian. If you're playing as Brian or against them, note that that one jab tracks to Brian's right side. The other thing, Brian has some of the best jab extensions in the game. Probably the best. The only thing that I would compare it to is a Mishima 112, but that serves a different purpose. That's just a straight up hicker frame. Uh, you know, flash punch combo, Mishima and Kazumi 112. So the thing about Brian is his 1-2 on block <clears throat> is only negative 2. And if you pressure with 1-2 well, you could sidestep and do 1-2, by the way, by holding forward after the sidestep. Otherwise, you get sidestep 1. So to avoid that, you want to sidestep a forward 1-2, right? Eventually, it's going to open up people ducking or doing other stuff, which opens up his other options. The thing about Brian is 1-2-1. One, is a safe mid that he could delay that has counter hit properties. Everybody knows this. He could juggle. Whoop. Yeah, see? Whoa. Second. Okay, <laughs> that's what we're looking for, right? So he could go into down back to or forward, forward three, I think, out of that, right? And even then, as we see here, he is standing to guard all. On counter hit on the first jab, it all combos. All of these strings combo on the first hit if it counter hits. All three extensions, one, two, three, one, two, two, and one, two, four. As long as you don't delay the one, two, two. But the thing is, you can also delay the one, two, two to make the gap bigger to get people to want to swing and eat the counter hit. And even then, it's still negative six on block. Not only is it negative six on block, you're kind of spaced out. So check this out. Okay, good. Negative six is still enough to be stuck in jabs. So you can't back that jabs. But like mids, let's see. What are short range mids? I don't think he has any. Oh, that's about it. Well, whatever. If anybody has any like uh, short range mids or slow mids, whatever, you can probably backdash away from it. A backdash is free to execute. You only have to worry about lows, basically. So there's no reason not to backdash. You can still block during your backdash in this game. <coughs> Another thing, so as far as tracking goes, we got the jab. The things that cover his weak, what is considered his weaker side is Brian's right side. The things that cover his weaker side, I mentioned this earlier, forward three doesn't naturally cover it, but if people sidestep into guard, into buttons, or even if they just step guard, this is zero on block, only plus one on hit. But forward three is zero on block, so you don't throw away pressure when it gets blocked, and it's a counter hit juggle starter, right? And then you go into, I don't know, that? Maybe not that. But you go into, like, down back two or up forward three, I'm sure. I don't know what the... What, what's the Milo? What's the standard juggle off of this? Oop. Oh, I ain't even, like, do the... Um... Maybe it's that or just back forward to that. Down back two? Okay. Quarter circle back to four, back to four. Oh, back three, forward two, one. Okay, for a wall carry, I guess, right? This is uh, an easy combo here. Okay, you got to get a little deeper with the back three. Oh, whatever that was, thank you. Oh, Massfield Games, thanks to the host. Back to four, run up, back three. Oh. Too much run up. Run up, back three. Oh, man, this is actually a little weird because you have to time it specifically. All right, I'll get it. I'm not a Brian player. There you go. You gotta delay the, uh, after the back three forward, you gotta like let him 
get in there a little bit and then do the 2 1. Otherwise, the one's going to whiff. So that's decent damage, 63 damage, and good wall carry. I'm sure he has better damage, but it's probably harder to do if I were to guess. But that gives really good wall carry that in there. Oh man, I, my back dash cancel is not doing good right now. Um, so the other thing that uh, tracks to his side really well, to the, to his uh, right side, his right? Yeah, sorry, to his left side, because you have to size up right here against Brian, is down forward one. Right? Yeah, see, so down forward one is a very important Brian move. Right? So the thing about it is, first of all, you have to hold the down forward after the down forward one to keep doing it. If you let go of down forward after down forward one, you're not going to get it. Second of all, you could combo into natural combo into the two follow up at any point. There it is. It's awkward for me. I'm not used to this. It's a little weird. You have to hold the down forward the whole time. One, two, three. Oh, that was four. You go up to four of them. One, uh, one two, three. One, two, three. Bam. Or one, two, three, four. Bam. And it's heavily delayable. Essentially, you can almost delay it to the very end to confirm it. But you typically need two to three hits. You, that's, how, that's about as good as you want to get at confirming this. Ideally, two. Reason being, here's an anti-Brian thing for you guys. So you have to delay it to confirm it, right? So you're going to delay the first two hits probably. Ugh. Let me get this one. Here's what happens. So. I'm trying to get it on the third hit. So this only happens if you start it when people are already backdashing. But the window is tight if you want to whiff punish this. So basically, you don't want that to happen to you. That's why if he has stopped at three, I probably could still whip punish it. But if he stops at two, I'm probably going to be stuck and not be able to whip punish it. But at any point, if he stops with down forward one, he's negative 10. So there is another, like, this kind of weird risk or worth uh, thing going on with punishing it. So one, two, three. See, negative 10. One, two, negative 10. One, two, three, negative 10 at any point. Two, two three, or four, it's all negative 10. The first one by itself is negative five. And then if he commits to the second hit without confirming it, at any point, it's negative 15. See? So most of the cast can launch this on block. So you have to hit confirm that. But that's still a very important Brian move because it keeps people still. Or at least it's a way to punish them for moving around too much. It may not keep them still because the damage is great, but it's not that great. Like... Wow, it's actually really good. 32 is really good. And then there's also the fact that if they try to punish it at any point with the negative 10, delaying the hits, you'll uh, land the later hits. So that's another thing about that. Uh, yeah, you could sidestep it left cleanly. If you sidestep right, the first two hits might catch you. But depending on how they catch you, after the second hit, if he doesn't delay it, it actually starts whiffing. It's weird. Like, if I put, I'll show you right now. Stand guard, and then if he goes right. See? See? That's just the thing that happens sometimes. Actually, you don't want to delay it. That's what's happening. So, it's a weird string. It's fucking weird. to do the last hit yeah and it whiffs then the last hit whiffs so if you're brian and you notice that they're going in that direction just do the down forward ones don't commit to the two if you hit them off axis this is something you could confirm you get used to this kind of thing but that's just how it is when you play your brian otherwise you have to rely on like his homing moves like uh well not that but you know that's the big one now i, I haven't gotten over the full crouch down forward four yet but that's the big one now right and then down forward four is a good one also but it's slow so step guarding it is going to, you know, easily stop it from being much of a threat. Uh, it is safe, though. <clears throat> and 
And if you do happen to connect the, the down forward four, you want to run up and do a core circle back four. Now you can instantly do a core circle back four, and it's guaranteed. Or maybe not instantly, but do a slight dash. Which I'm bad at. I'm very bad. There it is. And it's guaranteed no matter what, but you want to run up and delay that a little bit with a deeper dash. Because what ends up happening is it's still guaranteed, but if they hold back to get up, you're going to launch them. See, that's too early. You want to dash deeper. Ugh. Just like that. Oh, no, oh, too slow. Oh. Basically, there's a timing. Yeah, he's, he's getting up backwards. There's a timing. I got it one time that you want to get used to to get this to launch if they hold back. Ugh. It's awkward for me to uh, dash into a course to go back. I don't play characters that have that kind of input, so I'm not used to it. <laughs> so bear with me for a moment here while I get it one more time. There it is. Jeez. Yeah, so you want to get a deep dash, course to go back four. You'll get the launch, and it will still be guaranteed. So keep that in mind. And if you're against Brian, if he hits you with that, don't hold back. <laughs> Just don't hold back. If you have to eat this for staying grounded, so what? It's not that big a deal. Tech after you eat the follow-up. Then you tech. It's similar to when Leo does the full crouch sweep when your back is to the wall. You want to eat the second hit and then tech. Don't tech after the first hit. Or don't try to get up at all after the first hit, basically. You can't tech. So you, with Leo sweep, you cannot tech here. You cannot tech either. Uh, tech after the second. There you go. Just really making sure I'm clear. Uh, am I getting Crusader for PC? I beat it on PS4 already. I want it when I get money again. I want to get it for PC also, not to play again, but just to support it. But I don't have any. Uh, I'm not work. Hopefully, I get that job. But I'm not working right now to be buying that again. Although there is a discount if you look on Slick Deals right now, you could get it both European and American. For 13, under 13, I think, using a discount code on a specific website. Look up slickdeals.net, Yakuza Zero, you'll find it. So, anyway, back to the matter at hand. So, yeah, that's some of the big stuff uh, from last time. There's a lot of other stuff, too. So, uh, um, one person that could punish these jab strings pretty hard is Yoshimitsu. He could punish all of the jab string follows with a flash unless you do not delay the 1 2 1. Now, the good thing about the 1 2 1 is if you don't delay, it doesn't really jail them, so it leaves a gap. That's uh, big enough to allow them to get counter hit by the one without delaying it, but not big enough to allow them to do armor, flash. The only thing that might, that's probably able to beat it is um, EXDP or Geese's Raising Storm. Those are definitely the only things that are going to beat it. But that gap is going to fuck anybody, up, uh, uh, anybody else up for doing anything at all. No armor, no nothing. Not even big enough to parry or, or counter. So that tells me that the, that the gap is probably like two, one to two frames. <clears throat> Alright, so we got that out of the way. Um, on block, that is. the jab, with the, Without the jabs hitting him, that's on block. If the jabs hit him, that might change things, but the jabs not hitting him on block, that window is still, like, really good. 1, 2, 4 is also safe, by the way, and it's a wall splat, negative 3, but it's a high. Um, down 4, 2, 1 is, uh, one, is your primary mid-poke string, one of them. Uh, but it's unsafe, obviously, because you could duck, they could duck the high, but they have to guess between ducking the high or blocking the uh, not four two three, which is negative thirteen. And if the, the three counter hits by itself, it's the same properties as three plus four, except for the fact that it's unsafe. Three plus four is also unsafe, but it pushes out. See, it's negative thirteen also, but it pushes out unless their back is to the wall. But that, on the other hand, keeps them close enough to allow allow them to punish you with a thirteen frame move. And then if the three or the three plus four counter hit, you go into that and so whatever the fuck the juggle was. Uh... <laughs> Am I gonna do this again? <laughs> the Jimmy J Tran combo? Oh, oh. I got it like twice last time. Ah. You do this, uh, you can do this while standing three, three times, and do it while standing three, four the third time. If you do the Jimmy J Tran combo. Or you can do a normal person combo and do like down back two, jab back three into the string. You know, or back three into that.
Maybe not. Um. There you go. Easy combo. Or you do the uh, other string, right? Fully charged. Yeah, and one more damage. And even more wall carry. But it won't do the high wall splat like the like this does. Like uh, this does. Alright, so there's more stuff, but that's like some of the more important stuff. Because this is a po important move. Because it's a keep out too. This is one of those things where you're kind of dancing around back here from this range. And then you you have a read on, alright, I think they're going to dash in. Nah. You just press that button. The only way you get punished for that is if you whiff it. And if you whiff it, you can get punished pretty hard if the opponent is sharp. But honestly, if they're out of range, there's a high chance that it will go unpunished. It is more likely to be punished if they sidestep. Now, they can clip the leg, but that's like... Mm, you're probably not going to see that too often. Maybe with like a down forward two launcher, it'll probably clip the leg. Like a jack. <sighs> see? They have to be like right at the tip. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. That to be pretty close. Otherwise, it's kind of that. See, this is kind of why it's keep out. It's one of those things that it can be unsafe if they're positioned perfectly. But if they're positioned just out of range, you know, it's going to be a free whiff, essentially. Of course, Brian could just do that. So, it's going to be matchup dependent how often you want to throw that out, too, I think. If you feel like they have a really good long-range Punisher and they can land it consistently, then by all means, be a little more conservative with it. Yes, uh, I said that last time, Balsam. I know. How do you decide what character you're going to do? Oh, me, Ayuka? Uh, you probably asked that a while ago. Sorry about that. Um, I've done most of the characters. If you look down at my YouTube already, so I've done almost the whole cast at this point. I just have to find a way to fix my Kuma videos, and I'm doing Brian now. I only have a few characters left to do, so I don't really have a method of deciding. This is kind of what I'm in the mood to do. And I'm not, I haven't even gone over the taunt stuff. Um, up close, sidestep with punishing. The big one is obviously jet upper, but that's 14 frames. Sometimes you need something a little faster. Now, sidestep down forward, th down forward 3 1 is great too. But once again, sometimes you need something a little faster. So, like I mentioned earlier, sidestep uh, forward 1 allows you to jab. You cannot, even though 2 3 is better than a 1 4 as a jab punish, higher damage jab punish, but it pushes out plus 6. Less damage keeps them closer, plus 4. Right, just in case you're wondering. Uh, you cannot sidestep 2-3 because forward 2 is a move. But forward 1 is not a move, so you can sidestep forward 1-4. And this is why you see Mr. Naps and any other Brian players when they go up close. Because the way it works when you do sidestep punishment is if your opponent whiffs something that recovers very fast, you're probably not going to be able to react with anything slower than 13 frames. And even then, if you want consistency, you want to jab them, right? Um, unless it's a huge whiff, but we're talking about like they whiff the generic down forward one or they whiff the stand jab. You're gonna want to you're gonna want to go with the faster stuff. So that's what this is about. Side step forward one four. That's what side step jabs are about. And if you don't believe me, then by all means feel free to do what I'm about to show you right now. Do this dash jab jab block. Do this run up dash jab block. Try to punish this with something slower that uh, on reaction. Oop. On reaction, right? Let's see. Mm. Mm, see? See? But that, on the other hand... It's not easy. Not easy to do. And my reactions aren't particularly great, but you ask like Milo, he's been around for a while. He knows I can do this. <laughs> and another trick that I like to show, Brian has a, what is this, 14, right? This is 14? 13. He has a 13 frame uh, mid-high natural combo, right? Now, you may not always want to uh, go right into the, um, uh, the high. You want to be able to confirm it, but you cannot naturally confirm it. This is a situation where you can naturally confirm it if you sidestep down forward three. 
indiscriminately slice him down forward, uh, sorry, down forward two, right? And then if he does the jab, you confirm. See? Anything that's like 13, 14, 15 frames, you could do this against these fast recovery pokes and turn it into a hit confirm. You could, you could practice it this exact way that I'm doing it right now. So that includes Kazumi's down forward one, two, Miguel's down forward one, two, uh, Claudio's down forward one, two, launcher. You get the idea. Feng's down back one, four. I think that's 15 frames. 15 frames is like the edge case. You have to like instantly sidestep into it, right? Uh, do you think that'd be hard with 12 frame? No, 12 frame is actually my, my personal limit. Je oh, uh, 10, 11, 12 frame is my limit. Um, I think 13 frame is possible, but you have to be just super on point. So the thing, about, the thing that makes Kazumi so cool and so good at this is she has flash punch combo, 1-1-2, one, one, which is hit confirmable. So I can do a side step 1-1, one, one, right? And then just in case I fucked it up, do the 1-1 one, one on reaction. And just in case I fuck it up, I don't have to commit, and I'm only a negative one. That's also what makes Claudio's down forward one two so good, because his down forward one by itself is only negative two, or negative one even. It's either negative one or two. It's basically a 15 frame mid poke that goes into a launcher. That's natural combo. So Claudio is really good at that. But keep in mind, if they do that into uh, a jab string, on the other hand, that also blows that up, and Brian has that too. Let me hold forward. Right? Ooh, camera tricks. See? You have to, like, the, the, sorry, the side step it's a down forward two instantly is good at beating it because it's fast enough. And the jet upper is pretty good. Jet upper seems to have a tiny bit of evasion, right? Because he kind of leans to one side. It's weird. But as you can see, that works. But if I try to react, and do jab, even jabs. Mm. It's a lot harder. I have to sidestep and commit to a fast button instantly to stop most jab, not all, but most jab strings. Most. But if they commit to just single buttons, then sidestep pokes, really good shit, primo shit. Keep that in mind. That's the little, uh, some of the little nuances a lot of people don't think about when playing this game. And, and it gives you a better idea of why some of those mid strings are so good, like a Kazumi down forward one two, or even a Miguel down forward one two. It's not just about just random poking, you know, random zero range guessing. Woo! Who's that? Give in till I'm victorious. Thank you very much, Liver Slapper. I appreciate it. Hey, how's, uh, I know you hang out in Pete Diddle's Discord. I haven't looked there in a bit. How's he doing? He's still hanging out over there with Cornestra. By the way, you guys should check out Cornestra and Pete. Obviously, Pete Diddle's amazing. And Cornestra, they're both really good. They took some pictures. Uh, Pete Diddle took a picture of Cornestra in her Dragon All cosplay, walking her dog and, like, feeding turtles and shit. <laughs> it's pretty good because the whole time she has a serious face and she's just doing daily activities with the serious. It's pretty good. I like it a lot. All right, thanks again, Little Slapper. Uh, so yeah, Corso go back to as godlike range takes a grip. Uh, yes, have I gone over Corso go back to? I don't think I have yet. So anyway, that was just a super long recap, and I feel like I needed that because it was like a week ago when I did part one. So now I'm gonna go back to where I left off, which is down back two. And down back two is mainly a tool that you use in juggles. I don't think people and like Oki. I don't think people use it too much outside of that. It is uh, 15 frame startup plus eight on hit, which is great. And only negative six on block, which is not really only, but negative six is where you can't you can't really be sidestepping too much. So uh, jabs is gonna beat you out, no matter who you are. Jabs is gonna beat you out if you try to sidestep at negative six. And uh, just an FYI, this needs uh, hop kick frames to crush, I believe. So if they do a fast low, like the 12 frame generic low, it's probably gonna hit you if you try to orbital heal in this situation, negative six, because 12 frames. Is my math right? Nine frames to crush. I think my math is right. If I'm wrong, I'll... Does he have... He doesn't have generic glow, does he? He does. Let's see. I'll test it. He has generic glow. I did that too slow. See? 
If I do anything slower, though, it'll crush. But not generic 12 frame low. Now, that doesn't mean that you should not orbital if you want to do a hard read on a low. That's only for, like, 12 frame generic lows. A lot of characters have that from standing, but, like, I don't know how many people are thinking about using it after blocking something like that. I feel like if they're going to go low, they're going to go for something a little more, you know, heavy. Then, uh, but then again, Brian kind of doesn't have that either. <laughs> That's another weakness of Brian, by the way, that I forgot to mention last time. Brian's one of his uh, weaknesses. Mr. Naps actually brought this up a while back, and I remember this. Um, he has to take big risks to go low. This is about as good as it gets. He, this is about as good as it gets as a comeback low, and it's not the worst thing in the world. But you know, it makes him super predictable. It's like this is the only low I gotta worry about. There might there might be some of this. There might be some of that. There may be some of that. But these are fucking nothing. These are all what 10, 11 frames. Sorry, 10, 11 damage, not 10, 11 frames. 10, I wish there were 10 other frames. Brian players wish there were 10 other frames. Uh, 10 to 11 damage. That ain't shit. This is 21 damage with, uh, you know, counter hit properties, right? 41 damage on counter hit. That's the big boy shit, and that's all he has. He doesn't have a knockdown load to really, like, be like, all right, I'm going to knock you down. Now I'm going to mix you up. Similar to, similar to Kazumi, really, except Kazumi has the fly hell sweep bullshit, but that's not that great either. Um, so... That's a pretty big weakness of uh, of uh, Brian. But anyway, to go back to the down back two thing, it's mainly used as an Oki tool and a, a pickup tool for a lot of situations. Like if you feel like, for example, you land this and you're not ready to do the full charge 443, which you have to do fairly quick. You have to confirm this fairly quick. If you're a little slow, wow, but maybe not. <laughs> There it is. If you're a little slow, that's what's going to happen. And I've seen this happen to Brian players during matches online. So if you feel like, oh, man, I, I feel like I, I'm reacting too slow, by all means, just do that. And so whatever. It's going to be significantly less damage, but at least you're going to get the juggle. And you're not going to drop it. Um, similar to, like, low parries. If you feel like you low parried and you're not ready, quite ready for it, pick up with that into jab, into whatever. Like, down, uh, down, it's typically down back two, standing two, back two, four, right? And, uh, yeah, other situations like that. There used to be a reset in Tekken 6. I don't know if he had it in Tag 2, but he had it in Tekken 6. You guys know what I'm talking about? He ends the juggle with, like, this, and then he runs up and does down back two. And if you don't Tech, you get floated, and he resets the juggle, and then he can mix it up with run-up taunt. It's a jet upper if you're good enough to do that stuff, right? Which I'm certainly not. Uh, I don't know if he still has that reset. Uh, down back to beats relaxed options. Yes, it is 14, uh, 15 frames though, so he doesn't get the float uh, uh, on the block punish. Project one away does it in a neutral down back two. I mean, I could see why, because it's not the worst thing in the world to do in a neutral. It's plus eight. It probably tracks to his uh, his right side too, right? Let's see. Yeah, it tracks to his right side also. But, like, so does that. Not that. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention. If you want a mid... It's linear, but if you want a mid poke that's, like, the kind of poke that lets you move around, down two by itself is good. It's 14 frames. It's an elbow. So is down forward two. So, uh, generic reversals do not work on elbows. Like, uh, Oscars, you know, whatever. So, this will beat that out, and so will this. Anyway, this is 14 frames and only negative 2. So negative 2, you can slowly move around after. So if you want, like, just a regular old mid-poke, that if they block, it's not a big deal, down 2 is a go-to. And it has that follow, but it has counter-hit properties by itself. It's only negative 10. Right? And then you do your juggle after that. Does he get, um... Um... Okay, he does get a core screw after that. Okay, just making sure. <clears throat> so, yeah. I mean, down back two is not awful to do in a neutral. 15 frames isn't slow. It's okay. It's just on block. It's kind of whatever. But that's kind of Brian in a nutshell. Another issue with Brian, another weakness, if you will, is on block, he's negative more often than not. He has, sure, he has that. You know, I think fully charged forward forward three but he doesn't have like 
You know, he's not like your average poking character that's like only negative one or negative two on a lot on block with a lot of stuff. You know, he's got like this counter hit tool that's 16 frames, and he's got that that's negative four, which he could still sidestep after, thankfully. You know, but then he has to commit to a mid high. He can't just do, just do this by itself and sidestep. You get what I'm saying? Negative six. He could do this, but then this into this is not a natural combo on normal hit, on counter hit only. So he's not like a normal poking character. He's the one. He's the kind of character that has a lot of counter hit tools, but you have to kind of set up the counter hit tools in a neutral outside of one two one. To use this, for example, you have to have a specific kind of read, and you got like sidestep with them or dash up into it. Sorry, dash up into it. You have to do forward forward neutral forward three to avoid forward forward three. You know, and that's kind of what Brian is about. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so yeah, down back two hits relax, as Biggie Shorty said. Then we'll show you back in the states after you got it. Um, but down back two will not float punish like Eddie's back three three for example. You need 14 frames or faster to punish that. And this for 14 frames, he get a float juggle on Eddie when he blocks back three three. Now it can still float Eddie in certain times, like if he whiffs and he's like in the airborne for a portion of relax. This will float him, but otherwise it'll just hit him grounded, kind of, and he'll move away. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good move. I mean, plus eight is nice, even though they're all the way back there. <laughs> and also, if you go right into a high, looks like Magic 4 gets fucked. <clears throat> By the way, a quick recap about Magic 4. He has a very hard conversion with a dash jab, but... They gave him an easier conversion with 434 now. If you uh, delay or hold the 4 four in the end. Yeah, see? And another conversion, if you don't want to go into the string, an uh, easy mode conversion is uh, Mock Breaker. It's not a juggle, but it's something. Until you get better at the hard ass dash jab conversion. Just like that. That's not an easy thing to do. That's actually an old Marta conversion, too. He could convert his standing forward just like that on counter hit, but his was 13 frames. Brian's is 12. So yeah, keep that in mind. Can you get down 32? Uh, mm, not really, no. Forward three frame trapping on normal hit is pretty good. Yeah, on normal hit, Brian has a lot of great shit, obviously. Like this, it's a forward three, you know. What is that, plus four, not quite enough, no. Um, one four, what is this? 16 frames. There you go. That's another frame trap option if they happen to swing after getting hit by this, but it's not a great one because they can backdash it. But if they cut, if if you notice that they keep pressing something after that, by all means, you could just stick that out there, and then the button that they press will go right into the knee, and they'll get a counter hit. Uh, even then, at plus four, it's not an awful uh, option either. You're only gonna lose out to uh, twelve frames. Twelve frames is gonna exchange, and you're gonna lose out to eleven and ten frames. So maybe not so much good Kazumi with Magic Four or something like that, right? Eleven frame Magic Fours. But for most matchups, like a simple one four into it or a down four two one on hit into it, it's a solid frame trap. I agree. <clears throat> so yeah, all right, we went over down back two, down back three. This used to be so much better and worse at the same time. Once upon a time, I believe this was negative five on hit, and on counter hit it was plus five. I think. I think that's how it was. Now it's plus four on counter hit and only negative one on normal hit. So that's nice, but it's only 11 damage. Still, you know, I'm never going to complain about having a decent high crushing low option. You know, this is only, this is, while this is 12 frames, it's only 7 damage. Down back 3 is 11 damage, which is nice. And negative 1 isn't, isn't a super big deal, especially since it pushes out. If you, get, if you make them get hit with the tip, you know, it's a great whiff punish setup. At least the players know how to appreciate low like this. <laughs> Brian's had it all along. So if you like spaces out well, also, if you space this out well, this sometimes low profile stuff, like mids. Sometimes. I don't know if I can recreate it. I don't think I can, but let's see. What if I just make him jab and then down forward too? Let's see if I can recreate it. He moves forward a bit on a jab. See, Brian's down forward too. He leans into that shit. Maybe down one. Uh, down two. Maybe that. Hmm. 
It's hard to tell if I'm getting it, but I'm probably interrupting it. Counter hit is how I can tell. If you see punish, then we know. Punish! See? I'm hitting him after it's active. Punish! I'm hitting it after it's active. See, so basically his upper body's leaning back, so sometimes you'll get short range mids to whiff, or mids that don't have a really low hitbox to whiff. Like, a lot of down forward one pokes will probably lose out when you space that out. That's just, you know, that's not something you could really account for, though. That's more like something that I'd say is just like a cherry on top, you know? <clears throat> down forward one will probably hit it, if I were to guess. I mean, if you really want, I'll test. I mean, down forward one is whiffing anyway. Happening with this too. Yeah, that forward one's range is like messing with it, but it's a thing that happens. I've seen it happen in slow motion, you know, at the end of matches. It's happened before. And people were like, what? It's just not super reliable at it. There it is. Alright, so down back three is good, and I believe it tracks in both sides to both sides. Um Track step at least. Let's try walk. Yeah, not so much walk. So you could sidewalk away from the move. It's one of those moves that follows the uh, directions, if you will. <laughs> what about that plus one? Not that plus one. So jab into this is a pretty reliable at catching people stepping. Now maybe like a Lily could get around this. I don't know. But if Brian is unable to get around, most of the cast definitely is not going to be able to get around it because Brian is not a, he's a skinny character. So that's down back three. Next we got, down, uh, by the way, down back three is only negative 12 on block. Uh, it crushes highs on frame six. 16 frame startup. All right, so next we got down back one, two. I think this is only used as a wall ender and to break the wall, right? When's a good time to use throws in general? I don't use them enough. High drills. Well, the thing about throws is they're easier to break than ever, and people break them by accident. That's like a weird thing. But one of the most effective ways to use throws is keep out. If you have a 1 plus 2 break throw, it's a solid keep out option. I mean, in general, you want to test your opponent's throw break sometimes, and if you notice that they break it uh that doesn't mean never throw them again that just means uh you know eventually it's a mind game eventually people are gonna get sick of it and they might duck or if they keep breaking it it just gives them something else to look out for while you're mixing them up with a bunch of other shit it's another reason because like if i notice uh if like oh this guy's gonna be throwing me like crazy all of a sudden i'm just gonna stand there and wait for it to break i'm not really thinking as much about lows so you can like chip away at legs a lot more it just opens up other things. That's a better way to think about it against players that are good at throw breaking. Otherwise, you could just kind of like, if you notice that they're bad at throw breaking, uh, you could just throw them at will if you think they're going to stand. Uh, a great way to throw people is when they tech, right when they tech and get up. A lot of people like to get up ducking, so be careful with this. But it's a, good way to, it's a great way to set throws because it'll beat out their buttons. It'll beat out their low crushes, probably beat out their high crushes unless they just duck because uh, high crushes need X amount of frames. And it'll beat out their sidestep if you time it right. That's like a thing I do a lot with Gigas at the wall. They tech, I like stice step with them and then I grab them right when they get up. And if they don't, if they don't know how to throw a break, they're gonna eat a shitload of damage from that throw at the wall. Um, but if you're using throws as keep out, for example, especially command grabs, especially one plus two breaks, chances are your opponent is gonna be coming in with a button, or they're gonna be so focused on coming in they're less likely to break it. If they come in and commit to a button. You will interrupt them, and they will use that button as their break window. 
and it'll fuck them over. That's a that's a classic Tekken strat. So one plus twos, you know, are great like tools to use, but if you whiff them, it sucks. Another great way to use throws is uh, this is something that I've seen people do on purpose. Let me give you an example. Kazumi, her back one plus two is a really shitty move. This is what Brian gets when he messes up a throw break. If uh, this Brian were to try to do four four one plus two just out of range, and I think he's gonna grab me, and I press, I'm holding back, and I press one plus two. I'm going to get that, at least. So that's a decent move to get in that situation. Because Zumi, on the other hand, gets this fucking hood bullshit. And she's, she's stuck there in this fucking dumbass animation. And it's like you could whiff the throw and still punish it in time. So that's like a really, like, fucked up pocket sand strat. If you space your throw correctly, you'd be like, right there. And she does it, and you're like, eat shit, basically. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Fang gets shoulder. Bad news. I do that all the time, man. Yeah, Till knows. Uh, so yeah, making Pauls waste their super by whiffing throws. Oh boy, you might get whiff punished without even realizing it. Yeah, Paul Paul has good command grabs. He does, except for four four one plus two, which is still not bad. But if you um, make him fuck it up at the wall, he wall splats himself. If you break it up with your back to the wall, he wall splats himself, and you could do some extra hits on him, or just one extra hit on him. <clears throat> so yeah, that's that. Anyway. Down back one plus two, I usually only see this as a wall break. I don't see this as anything else. It is a 15 frame mid option. If for some reason you need a punish and they're ducking so you can't get this. Uh, that's there for you, I guess. I can't think of any situations where that happens, but down back uh, one plus two. Uh, maybe this is a decent way to block punish uh, rage arts if you want something that you're not going to fuck up. <laughs> and so like, you don't have to go into a juggle. This will probably kill him, right? I'm, I'm trying to think more in that way. Like like when I was playing with Feng before, I was punishing Rage Arch with shoulder for that reason. It's like, sure, I could launch him, but what if that shit that happened at one time when I try to hot kick him and it doesn't reach? What if I do land a hot kick and then I fuck up the juggle? Why put myself in that situation? Just fucking kill him with something that you know is probably going to kill him. So anyway, yes, this is a wall combo, wall break. You could do it out of this if you uh, do the Dragon Off cancel, the sidestep up. Tap up, and then you do down back one plus two right after. So it's back three, down forward, up, down back one plus two. So that's like a wall combo that you'll see Brian players use sometimes. It breaks balconies, uh, you know, breaks the wall, breaks the balcony. It's a, it's a very strong option to do that stuff. So good move uh, for that. In the neutral, I can't think of any other reason other than what I said before. If they're in recovering in a crouch state, so you can't get this, and this is too slow go for that it's a nice chunk of damage for knockback it's down back one plus two he's guaranteed to do both hits now let's see the properties on block it is mid high negative 13 that probably jails right yeah that jails i think So it jails. Yeah, it tracks to his left side. So there's another use for it. If you feel like negative 13 isn't a big deal to be blocked, depending on the matchup. For example, if you're fighting against yourself with Brian, what are you going to risk? Wow, 23 damage. Wow, 24 damage. So if you have a read on them going to your left side, that's not a bad option. That's not the worst option in the world, I should say. Not, you know. But it's not something you should do all too often. That's kind of a semi-hard read, basically. You know? The only person who can launch you for that is Kazuya and Jin and Steve with Rage Arts. I think those are 13 frames, right? <clears throat> Alright, so. Next, we got back one. This is the big one. All right, plus five on hit, and plus three on block. 20 frame startup, counter hit juggle starter, right? I don't know what the juggle is now, but the, the back two cancel used to be the juggle. Let me 
go right into the the elbow. Damn, I got the back three before. Nah, that's probably better shit than that. Uh, down back one pluk is very good oki as a wall combo. Yep. If you don't want to do this as your wall combo, uh, the down back one plus two gives you better wake up. It sets up taunt a lot better. Like, chances are you're not going to see this into taunt. You're going to see that into taunt at the wall if you see, like, a really good Brian. Because he recovers faster, which gives him more frames to start up the, the double taunt so it tracks, right? The double taunt so it tracks. A 4-3 down back one pursuit. But, but was that the right combo in, on the, in the beginning? Well, whatever. You get the idea. Point being, it's a combo starter on counter. Hey, you can look up the Brian combo list. Everybody got a billion of them online. I'm more about the move properties themselves. Uh, back one, I don't think has any inherent tracking, but it's one of those moves that's slow enough that if you don't really commit to a step, if you try to like step and press a button, it could gobble you up if you're not careful. All right. Now that's the whole thing It's like it's quite linear and he moves forward And you'll get his back And if you do step you should go to your right Because if you go left It, it has some Tracking because that's the way he's swinging So if you're going to go around this move Go right like with most other moves You go right right So you got that going on, but uh, in general, oh yeah, it ground spikes also, which is you're probably only gonna do at the wall. I think I don't think you're gonna do it mid stage. Uh, nice chunk of damage. Twenty one now. That was all right damage. What's up, Kyrie? Back one has some weird ass back swing properties going on. Yeah, his upper body kind of leans back sometimes, and so what's going on with that kind of shit is if you want like a technical explanation, in Tekken. The neutral stance determines hurt box, which is more like hurt bubbles. So Brian's left hand is sticking out like this, right? When I hit back one, that left hand is back here, and then his right elbow is up really high. So certain mids will just whiff at his stomach area. This is a thing that happens fairly often. Like, um, man, I used to know some good examples, but I can't. In, in tag two, for example, if you had Marduk versus Marduk, and on normal hit, if you try to do down forward 2-1 one, uh, on Marduk without delaying it, the 1 would whiff because the down forward 2 would hit Marduk in the stomach and he would be like, Ugh, with his hands up. And then the, the 1 would just whiff for no reason. That's just one random ass example. Just to give you. But like, all those weird hit effects, that determines their hurt bubbles, their hurt area. 3D hurt boxes, if you will. So, stance, same thing. So that's why when you do this, it, it'll sometimes have some evasion. <laughs> Always fucking Quinny Mitsu. Um, right? Oh, you gotta hold forward? No. All right. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's what's going on with back one. So it's a pressure tool. It's one of those where it's fast enough that it could clip people who are a little bit careless when you come in with it like this. But if you get, uh, if you sidestep around it, you could fuck up Brian pretty good, and you go, you're gonna want to sidestep to uh, your right, which is the co consistent thing right now, right? Sidestep right against Brian. That's the consistent thing. So, no, uh, no difference here. But this is still a very good mood and move, and it doubles as his uh, rage drive, which is. A pretty good rage drive. I mean, it's about as good as Dragon Ball's while running one plus two, but a little slower, right? He gets a big juggle. If he blocks it, how plus is he? He's plus six. He only does the taunt if it connects. Plus six instead of plus three. So plus six essentially sets this up, right? And if they jab, it'll exchange this. I don't know if it forces crouch. Does that force crouch? Oops. 
Yep, it forces crouch. So even better. Perfect setup for a forward three counter hit if they press anything after it. And then if they if you think they know, you, you could like try risk your stuff. The unfortunate reality is when you're trying to mix people up in those situations, if you want any reasonable good damage, you either have to commit to this as a counter hit tool, which is good damage, but it's a 16 frame counter hit low tool, or you have to go into this, which opens you up to getting mashed on, especially when you're nearly dying after doing a rage art. Uh, rage drive, sorry. It's gonna open you up to match because it's 19 frame animation and you have to input quarter circle back three. So it's like, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, when it connects, you can do like full charge forward four three. The more likely way that Brian players tend to use it is just like Dragon off off of a juggle, right? After corkscrew, um, right? I don't know. This isn't a real juggle, but just to show how what happens. Oh, I didn't charge that one. You know, I believe I believe that's one of the stronger options. That's core circle forward one plus two. You can do this for a little bit less damage, right? If you're unsure, that's like what six points less. That's actually significant. Uh, but if you're unsure of your inputs, down forward three, just to be sure, it's totally fine. And then course circle back four is the other option, right? Which is also shitty damage. So if you're gonna do, don't use course circle back four. If you think it course back four, just use down forward three instead. Same damage. Uh, oh, that works for Brian also. I know that's the Oscar shit. It's more. Um, I mean, the elbow is more damage if you're gonna do that. That's the uh, Oscar shit, right? Oh, the scaling resets? Is that why they do that? 21 damage. So what was it before that? Six, seven, eight. 87 damage. The elbow is better. It's a little bit better. But the up neutral down three is probably easier to do, right? Some size rage drive puts you in back turn. That's when down three is good. Got you. So if you rage drive right through them, you do down three. My elbow is max. Gotcha. <sighs> so yeah, that's all the back one nonsense. Next is back to... Okay, so we went over this before, right? Because he has one, four, two. So back two is pretty much a... Oops. Well, that comes out by accident if you're moving around and you dash into it. Uh, what is it? 17 frame counter hit tool yet again. Plus four on hit. Negative seven on block. Now this is one of those that even though it's negative seven on block, if they swing, you have a normal hit juggle starter right after that is only zero on block. All right. This reminds me of how I used to use Mardix forward two one, except Mardix forward two had a ton of range, and it's a little faster I think. But it is high high, and the second hit of Mardix forward two one did start juggles, but it was negative nine on block. This is zero. And you could delay it. Let's see if we could uh, interrupt it if he delays it. Yep. <laughs> he still interrupts Jazz if he delays it. So, obviously it doesn't jail even if he doesn't delay it. It'd be too fucking good if it jailed. Um, and then you could duck the second hit and then he has like a bootleg ass back to four if you want to mix it up. And I think that's negative 13. But anyway, I went over the, the, these moves when I went over 1-4. It's the same thing going on here. Negative uh, 5. Okay, I thought it wasn't safe. It's actually negative 5 with a little bit of pushback. Okay, good. How about... Okay, I know I would find something. There's always something. So depending on what they swing with, you could do a free backdash basically after that if they block that and uh, fuck him up. Of course, it's also linear and you get to his back and really fuck his whole shit up, right? It's a, with whatever the hell you want to do. <laughs> uh, can't taunt jet upper be sidestep. <laughs> no. 
Not if the taunt hits you. The taunt could be sidestepped. Unless you tech into it. Uh, you can counter the taunt if you're geese. Because it's a knee. You could probably wake up parry with Jin. No, as a matter of fact, I know you could wake up parry with Jin. My friend used to do that. I don't know if he still can. 3-3-2 uh, three, three, does not work on back turn guaranteed. It does not. It does not. It does not. It does not. Are you crazy? I went over this last time. I think it was you had to duck the second hit, right? Oh, sorry. Fucked up. Fuck, what did I... I did this... I beat this out last time. What the fuck did I beat it with? Milo, what did I do? What did I do last time? I beat this last time. I forgot how. Like, you can't duck it. Man, now I'm going crazy, because I swear to God, I did this on stream, too. I ducked it last time. Remember when we were testing um, the Ling Jiayu stuff? Hmm. I got to look at the archives. Because I beat this last time, I'm pretty sure. Was it with Ling Jiayu's back turn parry? That might be why. It was probably Ling Jiayu's back turn punch parry. Well, now I gotta find out. Now I gotta find out. We gotta check out work here. If there's even a one frame gap on that string, she's gonna blow it up. Punch parry. I was trying. I was trying to do punch parry after the second hit. She might be able to manually parry the the uh, second hit. I was trying to punch parry the third hit. Sorry. You talking about the new manual parry? I was trying to do the double palm. Shit, I gotta pump up the AC. Oh my god, come on, Manny. Right. We'll try that, sure. Check the archives and get back to me. I know I'm not crazy. I feel like there was something that I did to get around that. Still waiting for Zayu. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, it was one, four, three. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. Go look it out. All right. So yeah, three, three, two is, um, all right. Well, there you go. Three, three, two is a launch on the back. I don't know how I missed that. Well, sometimes I forget things. My apologies, Keanu Reeves, Nico. Uh, right. So, I don't. He has back two one two also, which is fucking whatever. Honestly, since back two one is zero on block, you should just end it there and then do whatever the fuck you want afterwards. Why commit to? Why commit to another high that's like only gonna push him away when you have a perfectly fine zero on block situation to set them up for anything else. You know, that. Or if they jab, uh, you could duck. <laughs> or you could just go into a fucking low if you want. Or a 12 frame low if you want to just chip away at them. Okay, so we went over all these other options last time, right? Yeah, we did. So it's back 2 1 4. He has it off of that too. Same situation as back 2 4. <clears throat> and that's about it for that. And yes, you could duck the back two ones. Actually, no, wait. That one jails, right? I think that jails. Let me recap this. That last punch, I think that jails? It do. Okay, it jails. I suppose if you want to push him away. And it'll still combo. It'll fuck up your juggle, but it'll still combo. Alright, so... Next, we got back three. He doesn't have the ult. He does. Okay. He does have the old follow-up. He has back three, two, which goes to a jab. That's negative four. I'm sure you can duck it. Yep. Even if it hits you, you can duck it. That's not combo. It sucks. I don't think it's any use for this back three, two. I don't know. You Brian players can tell me otherwise. Is there any use for back three, two? I don't think it's any use for this, to be honest with you guys. Um, let's see. Back three, two, one. Haha, <laughs> this is like a dumbass string. <laughs> God. I feel like I, I see this. I see this so little that I would get hit by this all the fucking time. Oh my god, this is just like three, two, one. It's the same string as three, two, one, two, three, two, one, three. Same properties. Negative 10 for the mid, negative 11 for the low. Without any delaying. You can delay a second hit. Except 3 2 is a uh, mid mid. While well, back 3 2 is a mid high. Anyway, um, once upon a time, this was his best wall combo in DR. You would have to delay the 1 plus 2 though. Now, I don't know what the fucking purpose is other than uh, floor break, I suppose. Yeah, that would definitely break the floor. That's a noob kill string. Sure. Yep. Uh, I think this is a floor break option. If you do not have a lot of uh, space, you can go right into quarter circle forward 2-1. And if you have even less space than that, you just... Down back two. Why would you do this for such little damage? You're going to fuck up your scaling. You don't want to do that kind of thing. Ah, that, that does 12 damage. It's more than I thought. That still fucks with your scaling. Right? If you need a short range wall carry, um, I think that still works for pretty short range. Let's see. Of good options to test and stuff. The only thing this uh, training mode needs is um, block recovery options and like options to record off of tech. That's what it needs. Record those and we'll be set. Where the fuck is it? Where the center approach? 
<clears throat> so you're saying like, well, not there. You're saying like close. Oh. Like maybe here? You're saying like this? Oh, wow, that should just whiff. Oh, I can't use that to test. Fuck. I guess I'll have to do the old fashioned thing. Too close to the wall. <clears throat> oh, you got a jab first, right? Uh, if you're already in a combo, I get, I get what you're saying. I'm testing it because. You're saying uh, uh, use it in the middle of a combo as either a bo post bound, post core screw, or in the middle of a juggle. That's why I wanted to test it off of this, but it misses. Otherwise, you're saying like... I don't know if that works. You have to run up to back three after that, right? It's not even good for that. It's only good for those conversions where he um, where he carries you and does the jab into back three, I imagine. Maybe. I don't know how to convert off of that shit. <clears throat> He has to press forward. Oh, he's not dragging off. What am I doing? Alright, whatever. Honestly, it whiffed. When I did run up back three, it whiffed. If you're going to carry when they're that close to the wall, especially off of this, for example. Off of like a uh, core screw situation. This is about, it's about the same as a bounce situation, right? I'm trying to core circle forward two one. He recovers so slow though. Ah, oh, he doesn't even get that. Man, how can I test this? Everything Brian does recover so slow. I'm trying to find a good way to test this. Uh. Jesus, you can't just do that, huh? That's all that you can. Ah, oh, it's not dragging off. I get my uh, brain mixed up. I'm pressing forward three sometimes like he's dragging off. I mean, down back two is uh, really good. It's kind of what I'm getting at. I don't know. I mean, I suppose you can if you're in the middle of like jab into back three and then you go for back three and you're not sure what's going to happen. So you just commit to that instead. I guess. But uh, I don't. I don't think that's that great. Especially since if they do a wall splat and you hit them with the later part of that, it's going to fuck up your wall combo. Right? I mean, you may get a down back one plus two. But there's a very high chance of fucking up your wall combo. The whole point is, you should not have did the, did the back three in the first place if you're that close to the wall. If you did that, you're already fucked up. At that point, you jab and then you do one four. If they're so close that back three is gonna fuck up your wall combo, jab and then dash one four. 
the old school shit. I've seen Brian players still do that shit in the tournament. His wall carry is all right at best. No, it's more than all right. Are you kidding me? Hell no. Hell no. Uh, Pierce, we're talking about in a situation where they're too close to the wall to back three at all. If they're too close to the wall, that doesn't matter. Like, if they're not close to the wall, then yeah, you want to do this just about every time. Just about. Although this into this is a little bit more wall carry. But it's also one extra hit, so you're going to get hit harder with scaling. Look at this. Look at how far he is already. That's already a lot of wall carry. <laughs> this pushes him back. So you're already starting with, like, wall carry. And even, of course, this. It all... He has a ton of wall carry. Like that, that right there is a shitload of wall carry. It's alright. Uh, I, 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 I'm doing the forward one pursuit combo because I'm so I'm used to it. That's a DR thing. Remember, the last time I actually played this character was DR. So, I'm more naturally inclined to do this every time I launch a jet upper. Even though it's not the real combo, I get it. It's, that's outdated. The old DR combo is this, in case you're wondering. That's the old DR combo. It was half-life, and then you took him to the wall, and then you took off another 20% of their health with 1-2-1. One, one. <laughs> that's the old DR combo. It's crazy, I know. Well, it was, it was like 40%, but you would take off overall like 70% of the health bar with the wall combo on um, so yeah, that's the back three stuff. Uh, so just in case you're, you're wondering how to cancel back three, it's back three forward. Everybody knows this, but if you're watching this on YouTube or something, you don't know. If you press forward, he goes into this crouch dash, and this is really only used for combos or if you want to troll people like fucking Nico. Um, you could do, or if you want to troll people like Nico, you could do that too. Like it's a real thing. Uh, but otherwise, he uses only for juggles. And then when you go into that crouch dash, you have the same moves you usually have off a crouch dash. Which is why you can do this. That's crouch dash, four, one, two, roll dash. Or you could cancel it with up and then press forward to do a jab if you really want to, like I was doing before. That's not that great either. Uh, but really, the big one is crouch dash, two, one. Which is how you do it. Back three, forward, two, one. Easy shit. Easy, 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 easy. Easy. <laughs> All right. Well, you get very far playing the way you play, so I don't blame you. You just play to have fun. It doesn't fucking matter what people like me think. Oh, he could recover crouching off of this, huh? If you hold down, he recovers crouching. Interesting. And it's only negative six. So this could fuck with people. This does fuck with people, doesn't it? People swing with jabs after this, don't they? And then you can just, bam, right? That's not hard to do. Negative six either way. Only combos on counter hit, I'm guessing. It does. Still plus four if he crouches. Okay. So keep in mind that he could recover crouching in case you ever see that move. Which you shouldn't, but, you know, that's exactly why you don't see it coming, right? All right. Next is back four. Classic. This is a 16 frame start move. It is uh, unsafe, sort of. But it pushes back. Even when your back is to the wall, this shit, like, tends to go unpunished. It's like negative 10 on the dot. I thought it was negative 11. Uh, Gigas is, like, the only one that can really punish this shit. I don't think anybody can fuck up. Even when your back is to the wall. I'm not so sure if there's anyone that can punish this. And, of course, the big shit at the wall is this, which I can't fucking do. But, you know, that's the ultimate taunt shit at the wall, right? That's, like, because taunt gives you plus 16. So it's a perfect 16 frame. Let me not get into this. <laughs> this is about as just frame as it gets. Does this have active? Okay, only one active frame. So there's no way to... At least there's no way to get the second active frame to fuck it up. Yeah, that's the f 
first time I've ever landed that shit. The first time in my fucking life. That I ever landed that shit. Now, if you're on a keyboard or a hitbox, that is a billion, billion, billion times easier. Here's why. For those of you that don't know how taunt cancel works, if you're in taunt, if you press back or forward, you're canceling out of it. So the idea there is to hit the back and the four on the exact same frame. As if you're inputting an electric, you have to hit the back four at the same time. And that's much easier to do if you're playing on a keyboard or a hitbox. If you're playing on stick, you're going to cancel the taunt the moment you move the lever back. <sighs> so anyway, mid-stage, it combos into forward forward 2. It links, if you will. 2D fighting your style for 50 damage. So that's nice. So if you want like a 16 frame mid that is essentially safe on block with a lot of reward that it also doubles as a knee... I mean, that's there. You could totally do that shit. Try to do it on keyboard right now. I mean, I'm not used to using a keyboard, so. Also, I don't know what, what these buttons are. I never. Uh, is this. The kicks are here randomly. Okay. That's four, three. This is the default. I still have to buffer. Uh, this is weird as fuck. This is really weird. You gotta get be used to it, but it is easier. The whole point is you gotta be used to using keyboard in the first place. I can't even input the taunt. <laughs> you gotta put me down this fucking rabbit hole, man. I'm trying to do a tutorial. What the fuck was that move? I've never seen that move in my life. This is not a very comfortable setup. Trust me, me sucking at it doesn't mean shit. You just gotta be used to keyboard already. It's just, it's easier. It is, trust me. In putting it, you don't have to worry about the back lever, see? I feel like I'm close. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Oh man, this is cramping the fuck out of my fingers right now. These are the, the, the fall buttons. This is really weird. on this thing on my fingers are like this my fucking sausage fingers are all crumpled together trying to press that shit if i had my own map buttons and i were practicing on keyboard it's easy all right it's fucking easier <laughs> you try to show off so you can jerk off because you play on keyboard or on hitbox or whatever it's easier trust me if you got like if you're one of those people that's already used to it putting all this shit on keyboards it's a lot easier I feel like I got close to it on that, and you know how long I've been trying to do this on stick? Now the easy to- oh my god, I just got it again. <laughs> it took me a decade of practice on and off to get to this point. <laughs> Keanu, fuck you. 
Alright, well, whatever. You can practice that shit all you fucking want. You're gonna need that in your arsenal if you main this character, because obvious. It's obvious. It's fucking cheap. And if you're at the wall, you combo this into this. Only at the wall, because it doesn't push back as much. That's the general idea. So you want to get used to comboing back forward to that at the wall. And in mid stage, you want to get used to comboing that to forward forward two. To forward forward two. And in this instance, seeing the combo is a way to confirm it. If you if you really want to be sure, you can put him to crotch guard after he recovers. Right? So you see, if I'm too slow, he ducks. But if I'm not too slow, it hits him. It's a nice chunk of damage. Oh. Yeah, so that's a thing you want to practice. Alright. Alright, maybe now's the time, guys. Ready? Maybe now's the time, finally. <laughs> now's the time. I got the serendipity. I got the serendipity. I landed the fucking... I can do it, I can do it, guys. <laughs> ah! Let me not get too sidetracked by this now. Let me not get too sidetracked by this now. <laughs> Let me get uh, back to the matter at hand. All right. So that's back four. Let's see if it tracks. I don't know if it tracks. Okay. It looks like it got some tracking to his right side. I'm guessing they could walk it, though. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Once again, he tracks well to his right side. No surprise there. Let's see to his left side. Yep. No surprise there either. So he has yet another option to kill you for going to his right side. So you want to go to your right against this character still. No change. It's perpendicular. It sounds like math. <laughs> the trick that I found out with the taunt is that you can visually confirm moves up to back four. When a taunt leg is perpendicular. That seems like the similar trick that people used to confirm um, to go into Kazuya's perfect electric, right? You go, you're supposed to look for the knee that touched the floor. The trick is the rhythm. That's true. It's basically a link, a 2D link, but it's one that you have to have this like perfect timing. I mean, everybody has their own trick to doing it. Like people tell me my back dash cancel is wrong, but look, I'm doing a back dash cancel for the Sway character, right? This is the way that, like, when Anakin made that video recently, he described Saints. That's kind of what's going on with me. When I was playing with Paul for a little while, I was doing it a lot more consistently than I am now. I got fucking up sometimes. But, you know, I'm canceling with down, and I'm double tapping back every time. I rubbed some fucking sweat into my eye. Now my eye's burning. Gross. All right. Um, so that's back four. Next is back one plus three. This is the this is the unblockable. Absorbs one hit. Excuse me. No. Okay, I'm pressing the wrong thing. This is his punch parry. <clears throat> All right. This is only for punches. It activates on frame two. So let's see. What's a good setup for it? Uh, it activates on frame two. That's a classic setup. My friend used to do this to me all the time. So it parries punches. All right. Doesn't parry elbows. Right. Easy. Parries punches. And then he has built-in follow-ups when it does parry, which I should just input here. <clears throat> Alright, this is going to be the two follow-up. This is going to be the one follow-up. Just mashing it out. So you can input this as back one plus three or back two plus four, back plus throw basically. No, you cannot chicken it because it is a parry. It is not, it's a unique parry. It's not a, a standard reversal. So that's the two follow up. 
And that's guaranteed. For 30 damage. Wait. Did I input it wrong? Alright, let's try this again. RB Norway says one when pairing two. Oh, RB Norway's fucking stupid. Oh my god. That's the only follow up. Sorry. What the fuck? He, look at, this is what RB Norway says one when pairing two or two when pairing two. And then one is a high and one is a mid. So what that means is, what I'm assuming that means is it's going to be a different follow-up if I press a two jab or a one jab. Right? The fuck, Army Norway? All right. So it's always, you always got to press two for the follow-up, but you get a different follow-up if it's a one or two. Is that what's going on? Yeah. All right. So if you parry a two punch, he gets that weird-ass mid punch for very shitty damage. Or, 22 is not shitty, actually. 22 is decent. But he gets more damage if he parries a one-punch. Weird, right? Mm, the less can make somewhat cross like a shape. Mm. Uh, your eyes only see 24. <laughs> your eyes only see 30. That's, that's the uh, joke. 24 is for movies. Most movies, outside of The Hobbit, are shot at 24 FPS and TV shows. <clears throat> All right, so that's how that punch parry works. Activates on frame two, like I said. Um, apparently, there's block frames for the punch parry follow-ups. I I don't know how you could block that. But the uh, two parry, the mid punch, is only negative five. Plus two on hit, plus seven on counter. How the fuck do you even get this data? And the high uh, punch is negative ten on block. I don't know how they got that data. That's weird. Anyway, we got back one plus four. That's the slow unblockable. Looks like he gets a free follow up. I'm trying to course to go back four. Maybe not. Well, I, I, by the way, uh, that's probably free, right? I forgot to mention that down back three hits grounded. So it looks like down four is guaranteed there, unless they, they could suck. Nope, that's guaranteed. Huh. All right, uh, up back one plus two. What is this? Oh, this is the, oh, this is this dumb shit. I'm pretty sure the only actual use for this is a wall combo. Right? If you do the whole thing at the wall, just like the massage with Steve. Down back he looks like Claudio's low animation wise. Uh, not really. Claudio's low is he sticks his foot out and he does the finger guns. This is like Brian. This is like the first, one of the first of these like unique lows that crushes highs. Like Elisa ha basically has the same animation. And it came right out of Brian. Brian's had this since, like, probably since Tekken 3, I wouldn't know. I know he's had it since Tekken 5. Probably Tekken 4 also. Tag 1 and shit. So, Brian's always had this shit. And the generic down 3 kind of looks like that, usually. Sometimes they spin before doing it, but typically they stick out their foot in that way. The actual use for it is wasting time in online lobby waiting for him. <laughs> shit. You guys are making me fucking snort over here, huh? You guys are funny today. Uh, I am so the back down. Wait, what? I am so. What are you trying to say there? If you're playing on pad, I'd recommend looking at Anakin's video. Oh, oh, you're talking about backdash cancel. Yeah, look at Anakin's uh, video on that. I made a video about backsway characters. My method is to cancel with down. With the perfect down because uh, i play on korean sticks so it's harder to find a diagonal and if you're having trouble finding the perfect diagonal it's much easier to find the down right which i fuck up sometimes because i don't play sway characters that much but if i were to practice it i could get it pretty consistently as you can see i was playing paul for a while and it was my method and i very rarely fucked it up um so the thing about anakin's method is it prevents you from inputting a quarter circle back because you're going from back to down back because you could, uh, 
the idea is you're backdashing. Um, I can't even do it now. Wow, I was doing it last time. Let me. Uh, there it is. You see how? Um, fuck! I was able to do this before. There it is. You see that? So your down back kind of overlaps with back, and it allows you to put another uh, to input another back, just like that. You see the last three inputs: down back, back, back. When you see it like that, then the idea is to go from that second back to down back and then back again. So that's why it looks like back down back back, then the gap for the neutral, then back down back back, then the gap for a neutral. See? I'm I'm like naturally inclined to input down. So it's like you're inputting a fireball from left to down. See, I'm not good at it, but sometimes I get it, other times I get my method. There it is. You see the last uh, five arrows? So you see I get one back dash, then I'm doing the back, down, back, back, and then back. That's the Anakin method. We see it on the bottom right there. So you gotta like, I, I, I'm already way too deep trained into my other way. The only time I'm gonna have to relearn back dash canceling is whenever the fuck I finally get a hitbox. Which there is a YouTube video about the unique method you could use on a hitbox to make back dash canceling easy. Did I go over 444? No, I did not. Not yet. Oh, there was, yeah. You know who that guy was? Bladika. He's no, he's a known bitch. Bladika. Nobody likes him. Sweeken recently on Twitter called out uh, Tekken and Hard, and he was like, "You got to ban this guy already." And was showing like pictures of like a bunch of his hate mail. Bladika's a bitch. That guy. He's a known. He's been a known bitch forever, and he's he's trash. He's like worse than me, but he's been playing this game non-stop since like Tekken 6 online. I didn't touch this game during Tekken 6, essentially. I played very little, and I played a little more tag too, but I barely played this, and now I'm back playing Tekken 7. And that guy is fucking, he hasn't learned a goddamn thing, clearly. And he's still a fucking moron. So, that guy's a bitch, and he's a low-level bitch, which makes him even worse. At least be good at the game if you're gonna talk shit about my backdash canceling method. That guy's trash. So yeah, fuck that guy. Anyway. Moving on. All right, so up back one plus two is this is like combo video shit. You can do the whole thing, and then eventually he does the uh, mock breaker in the end, which I never been good at doing. If but if you can input the whole thing, he does like the big mock breaker in the end. Or he, oh sorry, he needs a taunt to do the mock breaker, right? He needs a taunt, a full taunt. Ah, fuck. I fucked it up, but that's the uh, full version. When he taunts, he gets the sparkles. Otherwise, you gotta end it with a four, and, which is the knee. So, up, ba up, back, one, two, one, two. I don't know how many times that is. There it is. That's the full version without the taunt. And then with the taunt, he does like a bunch of extra hits with the sparkles. And then he goes, Yahoo! In the end, or some shit. Uh, it's basically combo video shit. Don't do that move. You're stuck in that animation for very long. Even, like, if I do nothing, see how slow he recovers? You know? It's a shitty move. Uh, my problem is I hit down when doing... Yeah, well, if you hit down, you're going to get a quarter circle back. Yes, he's a low-level known bitch. <laughs> All right, so next on the list is uh, up three or up forward three. Once again, this is juggle filler material. And not much else. It's actually very low damage. I think this used to do more damage. This makes it kind of a weak juggle filler early on. Better later on to like get him close and continue the juggles. So, you know, you see me do it a couple of times already. You know how it goes. Uh, outside of that, it's, uh, it is zero on block. I did not know that. So if you want to pocket sand somebody, you can go right into one of your counter hit strings. You just do a one to one to keep yourself safe. And if they press anything slower than 10 frames, it will, uh, uh, as long as it doesn't crush highs, it'll uh, counter hit combo the whole string. And if they block the one two, you have the one to kind of keep you covered if they mash after the one two. So there you go. Uh, but outside of that, this is pretty damn linear, I'm sure. 19 frames? No, that's not right. 27 frames. Okay, that's right. I'm pretty sure this is really linear. 
Ridge Racer. Yeah, see, no surprise here, right? Even if... Oh, he hit me, though. Oh, yet another, yet another reason to go right. <laughs> oh, wow. So next we have, here we go, the big one. This is interesting. 21. Oh, that's interesting. I know that. All right, so Orbital Heal, the move that all the other ones are named after, but none of them are as good as this one. No other Orbital is as good as this one for a few reasons. Number one, Brian could do a neutral jump one, and he won't go forward at all, and he'll clip you, any limbs you stick out, and he'll still get a full juggle. He will still get a full juggle, right? Uh, apparently, going uh, neutral with it makes it do one less damage. I don't know why. 21 damage. If you go up forward, it's 22. The other reason, this shit is only negative 5, right? Yeah, if this shit is only negative 5 on block, right? That's reason number 2. Reason number 3, this shit recovers way faster than all the other orbitals. All of them. All of them. None of them come anywhere near close to recovering as fast as this bullshit does. The, a popular way to use this when you do this neutral jump one from back here, you hold on to the four. It allows you, like, Brian's, uh, the really good Brian's, the, the Brian's I've been playing him for fucking ever, have a shitload of ways to whiff something to hold on to a button, like a jab, a four, an orbital neutral jump, which sets up the taunt. Right? Because the idea with taunt is one plus four plus three. You don't want to have to input one plus four plus three. And back in the day, you couldn't map buttons. So they have to find ways like a Balrog player or a, or a Raid and Dropkick player from KOF 13 or a Notch player from KOF 14 or now a Cody player from Street Fighter 5. They have to find all these ways to make uh, to set up their button holds. And it allows you to taunt. But you don't want to always be holding the button. So it's not like a turnaround punch where you're charging it to let go eventually. They, they, They'll go like this, I'm gonna hold it for a moment, and then I'm gonna run up, and then if I don't feel like I got it, I'm gonna let go. And then move on. Um what am I missing in the chat? The forward four is hit confirmed? What move are you talking about? Uh one of the best whiff punishes in the game with forward four. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, you you calling this one of the best in the game? I think it's good. It's 18 frames, so that's nice and fast. It's one of the better ones. But one of the best? Claudio 1 plus 2? Claudio with Starburst forward 1 plus 2? Jack down forward 2? You know? It's the kind of hit confirm that you could do. It's the kind of hit confirm that you could do like things forward 3 4, except faster, which makes it better. Um, it's one of those where you could press the forward 4, and before the animation starts up, you could see if they're doing anything, if they whiff something, and then you could sort of confirm the second hit. But that's also risky in and of itself, but not as risky as things, obviously, which is both slower and launch punishable. <clears throat> But you could fish for it with the first thing. Or you could just kind of commit to it and let it be negative 13, which is not a big deal. What defensive option does this leave Brian with? All right, orbital heal is negative 5 on block. That means Brian cannot sidestep jabs. Amongst uh, other things. There are some things that will track. It's going to depend on the move. But the one thing that for sure he will be unable to sidestep is jabs right so let's test we uh sidestep right versus brian right so we're gonna do orbital heal into sidestep right right so like i said jabs right now i'm gonna start testing all the moves that you usually lose up oh, down two all of a sudden works all right see so it's really just jabs I thought that would work for sure. I'm kind of shocked. Obviously, that's going to work. <laughs> he got around. 
It's really just jabs. It's at negative seven where it starts to get hairy for almost everything. At negative eight, especially. Negative eight, you're not sidestepping shit unless you're very far away. But if you're up close, like you are here, you ain't sidestepping shit. And that's up forward. Let's try neutral jump. Spacing matters. If you block the tip of neutral jump orbital, it pushes out, and you're essentially either out of range for jabs, or he could sidestep them. Spacing matters for sidestep. You see that? It's only when I block the tip. Shit's fucked up, right? It's fucked up. That shit is fucked up. No problem, amigo. Any other questions that I missed? Ask again if I missed them before. Um, if we still talking about forward uh, four one confirmation mid match, it, I definitely believe it is though in the way I said that it is, where you throw out the forward four and then if you notice something before the forward four hits, you could commit. Because I've done that with Feng online. I did it earlier today. <laughs> I've done that several times with Feng online. And if you can do that with Feng's slow ass shit, you can do that with Brian's fast shit. Although I think in that aspect, in that case, the fe the slowness of Feng's forward three helps. Kinda, maybe? Yeah, in practice it's possible. It's not a true hit confirm. Even if it feels like it is, I challenge you to do this. If you really think it is, Here's how you can practice that. Random guard and then guard all. And I'm not good at this. So I'm a bad litmus test. But I'm noticing. <sighs> Any delay at all on that shit, he blocks it. It's not hit confirmable. Hit confirmable is like Mishima 112. Any slight delay on that, and you're not going to get it. All right, so um, all right, so we're going over orbital, right? Yeah, so, you know, that's all the orbital stuff, right? You know, neutral jump is the cheap shit. It can be with punish, but it's fairly difficult, you know? But you got to be kind of ready for it. If you notice this happening, you got to be ready for it. If you're dancing around this range with Brian, against the even remotely decent Brian... Chances are you might see this. You gotta ha be ready to punish this if you see it. Think about what move you your character has that's gonna reach him if he does this in time. And if you're one of those people that reacts to any sort of movement and you go in too fast, then this shit will still gobble you up. Because it's slow enough to catch you in that manner. You don't want to go in too fast either. It's fucked up. It's very annoying. It's an obnoxious move. Right? And then it crushes like normal hop kick frames, uh, nine frames to crush lows. Can you try hit confirming Corsa back 2 4 on normal hit versus counter hit? Uh, I'll try, but like I said, I'm a bad litmus test for this. Alright, so we got normal hit. That's normal hit. I just did it. I was slow there. Alright, hold on. I gotta. I'm not doing a good job. Alright, well, let's see how I'll counter it. Uh, I'm, I'm inputting the 4 too slow. Oof. I know that uh, this is considered hit confirmable because Mr. Nabs does it all the time. There it is. Whew. I can't, honestly, I can't tell you if it's easier on counter hit. I, is there more frames? That's what's on me. Plus six versus... It's plus six. I don't, there's no difference. 
I don't see how this is easier to confirm on counter hit. Yeah, I'm guessing. Exactly. But that's because I'm bad at this. But the quarter circle back 2 4, that is considered hit confirmable. It's just very hard to do. It's one of those things you have to be, like, really good at doing. But Mr. Naps does that shit all the time. What's different in a real match versus practice? Oh, you want. In a real match, it's a lot easier. Well, I don't know. You guys are talking some weird ass semantics. <laughs> you guys are talking some really weird semantics. Yeah, I don't even know. In a real match, you see the opponent running full. Oh, so what you're saying is just because in a real match, because naturally you're gonna see some sort of movement. Similar to how I'm saying you could hit confirm this if you notice something. Since this is already considered hit confirmable raw kinda. It's just even easier to confirm in a real match because you're more likely to, you know, land it when their opponent's trying to do something. That's what you're saying, right? That makes sense, you know? And in practice, you're trying to just do it raw, so it's a, little, it's a lot harder. Right? I get that. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. Maybe you worded it weird. I don't know. I haven't been following your argument there. Um, well, all right. So we went over Orbital Heal. Apparently, Orbital Heal has three act three active frames? Yeah, three active frames. So, if you land this on Oki, and they block it... Well, you don't land it, but if they block it during Oki, you could make this negative three. I don't know what situation I would use to test that, though. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't matter. Alright, next is 442 Mock Breaker. This move is a lot more useful now that it's an armor move. This is a lot of fucking damage. 32 damage, knockdown. Safe on block, even, uh, even though it's negative 10, it pushes back, obviously. And it's 13 frame startup, which uh, I wouldn't count on this as a 13 frame Punisher. I mean, if you think you can do it in 13 frames, by all means, right? By all means, more power to you. I don't... It's a forward-forward input. That's what makes it hard. Like, Jet Upper is easier to do it. Forward forward input off of block stun is super, super hard to fucking do. If it's even possible. I'm not sure if it even is, to be honest with you guys. I think, I don't think two inputs, uh, two inputs in the same direction is possible. Nah. That wasn't a punish. Block. That wasn't a punish. If it is, it's fucking hard, shit. I'm like pressing my button really hard. I'm fucking on my button. It feels like it's getting stuck. Yeah, I don't think it's possible. But when you have separate directions, like it, I'm talking about frame perfect situations. In a frame perfect situation, I don't think you could do a forward forward or a back back. But like different directions, like a jet upper, you could do that. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Ah, oh, boy. This is what makes it fun and more more worthwhile. Sure. I mean, it's just Tag 2 took that too far for my taste. But I like Tekken's depth. Sure. I just, I think it gets a little needlessly crazy sometimes. The thing about this game specifically, I'm changing my playlist here real quick. I'm going to play some wee bad JRPG music now. Um, the thing about this one specifically that's been bugging me is um, the movement stuff and the hurt box, like the way they interact and all that shit. It's been crazier than ever before. And that's always been one, uh, my most hated thing about Tekken. And uh, you'd think that because of that, I'd think that it would make me dislike this game. But I still like this game. It's just refreshing to go back to 1v1 Tekken and for it to have so many exciting new things in it, mechanically. Tekken 6 I did not like. I didn't give a shit about the bounce system. I didn't give a shit about floor breaks, about ba balcony breaks, wall breaks, any of that shit. I didn't give a fuck. I did not like Tekken 6 that much. And Marduk sucked in it, so I really didn't like it. Uh, tag 2 uh, got too fucking crazy with the tag system. Alright, took me forever to go, go on. Um, forward forward 2, I don't know if it has any inherent tracking, but it's a forward forward move. You know what that means. You could delay it a bit to uh, add some uh, realignments to catch people stepping. Let's see. I didn't think so. Yep, so. But like I said, 
You know, you delay it a little bit, you'll catch them. So that's why forward forward moves are so hard to step, especially when they're fast, like that one. If you step sloppy, it'll just clip your step. That's why you'll get hit by those random Jin, like, you know, forward forward twos or double Jin forward forward twos. Or even the random Jin forward fours. Those don't even realign. Is if you're sloppy with your step, the tip of his fucking toe will catch you in the crotch and you go down. Alright, so next is forward forward three. Um, this is a move you can use in the neutral situation. Uh, and if you hit him out of the air, it core screws. I think it tracks him, but it is on the slow side, but it covers a lot of range. If you charge it, I think he's plus. Yes. And if you don't charge it, he's punishable. I need you need to get the full charge. Yeah, there's no tears here. You need to get the full charge to make it plus eight. Plus eight with a lot of pushback, though. Unless you're at the wall, I guess. Um, it pro I'm assuming it doesn't push back. But here in the middle of stage, sure it's plus eight, but I wouldn't recommend forcing a mix up because as you can see, you're gonna see you're gonna get a situation like this. You maybe you could stick that out, but you risk whiffing it if they don't if they hold back or they don't do anything. But if they try to come in on you after it's blocked for some crazy reason, you could stick out a three plus four or a standing four. I wouldn't recommend it unless you have a real good read on people. <clears throat> Uh, 443 is usually an input error for forward three. Well, yeah, that's because you're trying to dash to forward three. So you gotta do forward four neutral forward three. Otherwise, you're gonna get forward forward three. Now, I think. Did somebody. I'm hearing things. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I heard something weird from my left side. Um, I think this tracks both directions, right? Let me try this. Uh... Well, it's slow, so it's gonna have to try to. I'm gonna have to try to try. I'm gonna have to record this. That's the best way to do this. Because it's slow that you would need to change your timing. Oh boy, look at that. You see? It's a solid tracker with good range. And I think if you get them to block the tip. Okay, well, Brian reaches. But some characters might have trouble blocking us at the tip. See, like Brian's jabs wouldn't reach. Uh, let me see. Let's try that. Nope, let me backdash. It didn't say punish. Wait, negative 12? Am I seeing things wrong? Negative 12? Is it a 13? How did negative 13 happen? Second by you're fucking with me. I'm blocking it on frame one and it's negative twelve, and a second by goes from negative thirteen to negative twelve. What the fuck? No, I'm charging it now. Am I crazy here? Oh. Well, now I'm holding back. Okay. Hmm. Well, now all of a sudden I'm getting it. I don't know what that was weird before. Second bot was lying to me. Because the only way it could be negative 12 is if I block it on frame 2, but I was blocking it on frame 1, it said. So. That was the second bot being weird. Alright, well, it's a consistent negative 13, it seems to be, even though it does have two active frames. You probably have to block, like, the tippy tip tip for that shit. Um, and if you hold it, it's plus eight. Knocks down either way. And this knockdown guarantees some of that row. He laughed. Because <laughs> he did the taunt. Uh, if they hold back. See, so they're guaranteed to roll a few times. What that means is, if they're near the wall, you probably could run up and down three two, or maybe even better. Whenever you see that roll happen, assuming you recover in time, you could get free hits, because that roll is inescapable. Oh, 
was close. That's, uh... Yeah, sure, this is fine. Alright, we could probably get better than that. If you're really ready for it, there you go. Yeah, uh, Keanu, I said that already. There's two active frames. There's negative 12 to negative 13. So if you get them to block just the tip, the thing is, when it was saying negative 12, I was running up close and blocking, so it didn't make any sense. And it was saying, um, Tekken Bot, if you look on the top, it says one out of one. That means there's only one active frame on the move. But if there's two active frames, it will say one out of two. So if I block it on active frame number two, it says two out of two. So Tekken Bot was lying to me, I think. Oh, sorry. No, you didn't. There's timestamps. You said that three minutes ago. All right, so yeah, if you if you're ready for it, you can get you can run up and get a back three, it's a, the while standing uh, three delayed four com wall combo, or you could go into down three two if you want something easier. If you land that near the wall, let's see how far away you get it from. Ooh, I think you can get that. I think you can. Nope. Okay, down three two will probably work. Down three two for consistency, but if you're a bit closer, you get the back three. Uh, can you run and cross chop out in the open? Huh. Wow, oh, you need a full run for that. Damn, you need more than that. Mm. I'd have to record this on myself. Alright, I'm gonna switch stages. I'll do it out of the open. You might be able to. What I don't recommend doing, I think, in that situation is doing the full run three. Uh, sorry, full run four low. Because then you're actually unsafe, I think. Unless you get them to hit, uh, if you get it to hit on the tail end of the slide. The low slide. It's not really a slide, is it? The low kick. Yeah. Oh, shit. Can he follow that up? Well, it comboed, as you can see. Good call, Milo. <laughs> Damn it. You gotta get a full run. Jeez. I'm not used to using this like this. I wanted to combo like that again to see if I get a follow-up. Oh, he recovered standing? Huh. Oh, man, I'm not used to this timing at all. Shit, how do I get to combo again? Get him to float again. I'm looking at his feet. Ah, damn it. All right, maybe the down three was guaranteed, but no, you could tech that. The float, you could tech. Hmm. And, uh,. <laughs> I mean, it's guaranteed even if it doesn't combo. When it combos, it floats him into the air that way. This is uh, this is one frame faster.
Damn it. Once again, that... No, no. Yeah, they can attack that. So, yeah. It's just a running cross out. <laughs> I'm making weird faces while I'm doing this. I'm like... Arr! I'm making, like, Popeye faces. All right. Um, I'm going to look fucking crazy in the, in the uh, archive. Like, I don't look crazy enough as it is. All right, well, next one, we talk about another big Brian move. Forward, forward, four. This move has always been fucking cheap. It's always been basically a homing move, even before homing moves existed. It used to be more fucked up when floats existed, because if you tried to get up at all, this would float you into a full juggle. At the very least, he doesn't have that anymore, right? Um, does he have a free follow-up down, though? Does it down four follow-up or guaranteed? Yeah, it sidesteps to his left, too. Yes, that it is. You are correct. He automatically sidesteps left. He hits you in really crazy angles. There are certain situations where if he sidesteps left and does that move, and you do a move that moves forward, he'll get behind you and hit you, and you'll be unable to block. There's weird shit like that that happens with this fucking move. This move is fucking cheap. It is negative 10, so you can punish it with a crowd shaft unless he pushes you far up. So, like, if he... Unless you push you, I can't even talk. <laughs> Unless you block it from like slight distance, it doesn't even have to be a lot. From a small amount, I can't even talk. This is crazy. From a small amount of distance away, <laughs> if you block this fucking move, even though it's forward forward, which means he has to dash. He doesn't have to dash that much. So let's see. My words, my words. I'm a college graduate, guys. I promise. So, cross jab. Cross jab. No cross jab. Cross jab. It is a high, by the way, so you can duck it. So, if you're geese, you could probably get a pretty good punish on this, even without meter, as long as you're not too far. Gigas will always get his cross jab on this. Uh, Lee will always be able to get while standing 3-3. Three, three. Brian has a 10 frame while standing move, which I'll try right now. The problem with Brian's while standing 10 frame moves, it, it's inconsistent unless he's up close. See? I gotta hold back. He has to be like point blank for it to be 10 frames. There it is. See? It's not consistent. There's a couple of characters that have this. Marduk used to have it. Um, I think Paul has this. This is while standing 1 plus 2. Unfortunately, if you're far away, you don't get shit. At the very least, it'll stop the Brian player from doing anything else. But it can whiff also, which sucks. Oh, if it whiffs, that sucks. You don't want this to ever whiff. Yeah. <laughs> And the crazy thing about it is it's hard to even tell if you're going to end up far enough for your, like, cross shots to whiff. It's kind of hard to tell that, you know? So it's kind of like, if you're going to swing after blocking that, um, it forces crouch, right? Yeah, if you're going to swing after blocking that, swing with, like, a mid or a low. Consider dashing in his face, but some Bri sometimes Brian's players like to backdash or sidestep and do some bullshit after that. Usually backdash. They'll backdash and throw out some shit thinking you're going to whiff. And you might just end up running into it. Nine frame, uh, you know, ten, nine to ten frames. That is like a huge disadvantage to be in, right? Even when spaced. But you'd be surprised at how fast that goes away when you're in a situation where you have to dash. If you're in a situation where you have to dash, that ten, those ten, those ten frames, those nine frames, they go away like that. That's why those spinning situations are, while, as great as they are, you have to, like, kind of uh, rely on long-range moves. You can't really rely on, like, oh, I'm going to dash in their face and do something. Yeah, 4-4-4 four, four, four at close range could hit you back. I know. I mentioned that already. It only usually happens when you, um, you do some sort of move that makes you move forward a bit. But that's what happens sometimes. What happens there? I'm going to try to neutral guard it. See? If I'm not holding back to realign, he hits you in the back and just naturally. But if I hold back, I realign instantly. See? That's just one of those things that happens. 
That's me sidestepping into it in case he gets out. See, he sidesteps first and does it. If I'm not doing anything to realign there, that's that. What's going on, pressure guy? Yeah, this move is fucking cheap, right? And then they buffed it in this game, which really pisses me off. It's like, sure, he doesn't get the old Oki, but then on counter hit, he gets a fucking juggle starter. And it's 38 damage. That move is crazy. That move is crazy. It's it's in course through, though, so you have to... Uh, ooh, and if you do get that weird-ass cross-up like that, you lose your juggle. But as long as you hit people in the face with his kick... Hold up a second. This might be uh, the job thing I applied for. I'm sorry. I gotta look at this email. Oh, uh, no. It's my fucking my college emailing me about other job stuff. <laughs> uh, that's still good of them, but, you know, it's not the one I'm waiting for. All right. So, uh, what is the... You Brian players out there. Uh, jobs? Um, what is the uh, ideal juggle for this? Well... What is the easy juggle and what is the hard juggle? What is the good juggle that works matches, works in matches, and what is the easier juggle that is not as good that also works in matches? I don't need like the super crazy juggles, you know. Easy juggle is core circle forward three four, three three four. Really? Oh, okay. You still have to run up and do the course circle forward 3-4. But that's not that hard. Where's my dash? It's not dashing. I do this better on pad. Ugh. I can do the course circle forward 3 over and over again on pad. I think I know the hard juggle. I'm gonna take a guess without looking at the chat. We'll find out if I'm right or, or wrong when I try it. He was almost doing it to the music. to try to combo with this fucking character. I'm not gonna lie. I usually try to avoid doing this during these reviews, but man, is it not tempting to try to land this one time? Damn it. About to switch the pad. Then again, my pad is not broken in, so... I was trying to do while standing three, while standing three, while standing three, four. It's a mock breaker. I'm pretty sure that was the juggle, right? And uh, trust me, I, I used to do this instant while standing three shit all the fucking time on pad in the arts. Not that hard on pad, but on stick, it is very awkward for me. Alright, 
enough boring you guys. So that was an easy juggle. What's another good juggle to do off of this that's not like fucking pain in the ass to do? What's another what's another uh, good juggle? Is there any other good juggles that I should know off of four 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 counter hit? Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I forgot, I think I seen Naps do that. That's cool. That's cool looking. Man, his struggles look so lame before. I'm glad they made them look cool again. You gotta dash up for this stuff. And then uh, forward one, back three, forward two, one again. Okay. Is that a high? Let me say something. No wonder why that's so awkward to hit. Got it. Oop, back three. This is very awkward, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That looks like even if I do hit the two, it's gonna fuck it up. Where's the back three? Fucking back three's not even coming out now. Okay, I gotta not do that from up close. Ah, dragon off. Let's try the, the one plus two. Ah, my brain keeps trying to do dragon offs. Why is it the opposite? Again, I did it. I hate he recovers so slow that sometimes I input the back three too early and then I get nothing. It's uh, awkward to say the least. Oh, now I can't get the second back three. Yes. Fuck me, man. Fuck me. Ugh. That's an easy one.
It's a short range wall carry. Yeah, Brian combos hard. I know that. I know this. I know this. I'm not a Brian player, but I know this. They were pretty uh, weird before, too, with the dash jabs, back when you had the dash jab in DR. Not that hard, but they were weird. All right, well, 4-4-4 four, four, four is cheap. We know this. It's a homie move. It core screws on counter. Hey, what am out of the air? Oh, next one is another one. Another big one. Uh, jet upper, 14 frame punish, negative 7 on block. I don't think it tracks at all. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. It's one of those where you have to be careful. Yeah, see? Got it. A negative four attract. So the window to step it is uh, smaller than usual. Probably because it's such a fast move. But you could walk it easy enough. But yeah, it's a 14 frame Punisher. It is high. So keep that in mind. And there's all sorts of funky ass combos you could do, I'm sure, right? <laughs> can you do that? Can you do that? I think you could do that, right? But can the back three reach? Nope. All right, so it's dash while standing. Better stuff than that, right? You get a forward one in between the forward forwards. Okay. I try to get a forward one there and work. go right to forward forward too I guess I don't know how much more damage that jab is gonna add mm. 32 but you went oh good <laughs> well whatever you can do whatever the fuck you want off of this right you can just run up and back three also if you want if you want to just walk air instead walk carry with that because jet upper launches them far away so it's a lot of walk carry with jet upper jet upper is good it goes without saying 14 frame punisher very rare to have that and then to have it as a safe on block option it is a high though all right uh so next is what is this oh this this is the new shit Wait, no. Back, down, forward? Wait, what? Back, down, forward, four. No, this is that move. Oh, fuck. What a weird-ass input. Oh, this stupid-ass move that you could cancel, right? Can he cancel this? I am. I thought he used to be able to. Okay, you can hold back to cancel this. There you go. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you know. This is to beat up, like, new people. It's plus 14, <clears throat> but it's a guard of a plus 14, so you can't get anything off of it. See? But it is plus 14. And uh, you get uh, this knockdown on counter hit, which gives you a free map. But that dumbass spin is super seeable, and if he cancels the spin, you just go into like a wall standing option, right? Is that what you do? You can't punish him in time for the cancel, so the cancel is very fast. The cancel is quite fast. But the and the low comes out slow. So there's a timing where it's a timing. What's the which one's the cancel? Thanks for the follow, Firebird. So he recovers slow enough that you can come up with like your standard 11 frame move and interrupt anything he tries to do. But he will be safe if he cancels if you wait for the luck. But this is one of those that's kind of like dragging off back 2 1 3, where you could duck and if he cancels into the throw, you could come up with a wild standing move. But in the case of dragging off, you'll punish him. In the case of Brian, you're not going to punish him. So if you react to the spin. So this is, you know, it's pretty gimmicky. Kind of OS a down forward and then delay like down forward till that four, and you'll get a wall standing four and a low parry if you want to OS it. But like that's a lot to do for one fucking dumbass move <laughs> like like that. But you know you never know when you're gonna see that move, right? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You know what I do? I know it's not a good move, but I gotta do it. I gotta do it. There are some people that are looking at this that don't know shit about dealing with Brian. They gotta know. Like, why is that a bad move, right? It's not something you're going to see unless a Brian player is like, I'm going to fuck with this guy, or or if they're just, like, too new to really know, you know? They're going to, like, throw it out. That's tracked fairly well. Wow, it tracks really well. I'm trying to, like, delay it or do it early. I'm not getting around it at all. Yeah, that tracks quite well. I didn't know about that. Alright, um... Yeah. Alright, so that's that dumb move. Back down for four. 29 frames. Alright, back, back, four. Oh, that's the big old round ending move, right? This shit. If you get people to block the tip, I think he's safe? Right? Because there's like 13 active frames on this, and that's why you usually see it from back here. If it whips, it's not a big deal because he's only going to get, like, you know, do the move, asshole. Because he's only going to eat, like, you know, a grounded hitting normal. He's not going to hit anything crazy. Grounded hitting normal, like it's a 2D fighter. A grounded hitting move. It's not going to be all that crazy. But if you block it at the tip, it's safe. I'm pretty sure. Watch. Try down four. Okay. Oh, let's go further over. 
Eight. Alright. I got frame number nine blocked there. What was that, number nine? Ten? Alright. Maybe it's always unsafe. But if he tries to go for something big, like that's a 13, 15 frame low. So you try to see that's going to work there from, from far away. Let's see. Ugh. I should make him recover uh, standing. It's gonna be annoying to do. Oh. Why is your fucking grounded hitting mid so annoying to do? See? But up close. No problem. So that's the general idea here of why people do it from far away. It is random. Like, it'll just clip you if you try to swing at him. See? If you, like, react to him being in the air, it's already too late. You're going to get counter hit. And it does 28 damage. So it's a, it's a popular round ender for that reason. And then if it whiffs, it's not a big deal. This is, like, the kind of round ender you usually see when Brian has, like, a pretty big life lead on you and you're on the verge of dying. And it like it's active the whole way, so if you like you're on the floor for some reason it'll hit you too. All that stuff. Alright. So that's that move. No tracking on it obviously. Next is while running three. It's a standard while running three. It's, it's basically the old generic while running three. Nothing really fancy to say about it. They are pretty linear. I think you wanna ideally sidestep it to your left, I think. It might be either direction in this case, though. Woo! Never mind that. Go right like always. Go towards the ass. So you can fuck up that ass. Alright. And that's it. Now I'm up to the wall standing moves. Alright, let's go through the wall standing moves real quick, and then I'll call it for this one. Because my ass is hurting here. Okay, starting from the top, we got while standing one. That is his 15 frame while standing launcher. Much like quarter circle forward three. Quarter circle forward three gives you while standing three. Quarter circle forward one gives you while standing one. So if you want like a, a mid option that you want to use almost like a 2D style counter poke. Because it has like shit range. But if you use it like a counter poke 2D style and they swing at you and you want to clip a limb, that could do that. It actually has deceptive range, but the range isn't that great, obviously. Like Jet Upper, I'm pretty sure has more range. Yeah, see? Uh, so yeah, if you want like a mid option, this is totally viable. You could also do a crouch dash and uh, roll dash and let it come out late. Like that and add some range to it. I'm pretty sure this tracks to one side. We're gonna test using down back four on no no that pushes out. Down back three on hit. That pushes out two though. Well let's let's see what they both look like. Run up. So since that recovers standing, I could test tracking in both directions. I'm pretty sure this tracks really well. Yeah, see, this tracks really well to both sides. Now let's try with down back four, because that's negative two, I think. Alright, so off of that, it might just push out to set that up better. Yeah, weird. Um, the other thing about this is unlike a lot of other wall standing launchers that are 15 frames, it's launch punishable, but it pushes back. This is similar to LOL's while standing too. It's like super unsafe, but it pushes back so some characters will not be able to launch it. For example, 16 frames, Feng is not going to launch this shit. 
because his fucking hot kick range is garbage, all right? But Brian, not even Brian can launch his own shit. Right? It's fucked up, isn't it? Uh, Brian, if you want the most punishment, maybe that. That didn't punish. There it is, that punish. This is one of those instances where you could use that. Down back one plus two. One of those instances. More range than that upper. So yeah. If you're fighting against Brian and you're practicing shit, this is a key Brian move to punish. You, no matter which character you're playing as, if you, you're, you're uh, testing against Brian, you need to punish this move. You need to find out what your best consistent punisher is for this move. And when I say consistent, I mean you need to block that from all ranges. All ranges. All ranges. Right? So if I just, like, record him doing a little of this and then that, right? Will I always get down back 2-1? My guess is no. See? That's what happens. Now, forward forward 2 is always going to be good for it, though. If you're ready. Because you have to... You have to instantly do that shit. Huh, so that's just, that's just how it be. How fast is this? 18 frames? What else does he have that has good range? That's not natural. That's not natural combo. Alright. Nope, definitely not. It's fucked up. I hate moves like this. Launchers. Why is it gotta be launchers that are like this? Fucking lame. That move is fucked up. I'm, I never punish it. Same with laws. I never punish it because I'm terrified. Oh, my shit is going to whip. My shit is going to whip. But that's on me. I have to do my homework. You know, and <laughs> do my shit. Do my due diligence, if you will. Don't be like me. I don't know what other long range 16, 15 frame tools he has. Yeah, 442. Yeah, I know that. 442 is always going to be reliable. You just have to input it fast. Which is kind of difficult. This is, this is just going to be like 50 frames, but it sticks out, and then that's it. You have to, like, without any frames wasted, essentially, forward forward two. So, you know. It's a little rough. But even up close, he can't launch it, which is fucked. Alright, so there's that. It tracks to both sides when he does down back three at negative one. But at negative two with down back four, it loses to his right side so that's one of the few instances that you want to go left if it's versus that move which is crazy because that means Corsica forward one is a launcher that tracks to his weak side side step right versus Brian there you go step guard is your friend I'm pretty sure I've seen this happen to me before, and I ain't really put it two and two together. Now you know, Milo. <laughs> I ain't really put two and two together in my head, but this is a thing that, like, Brian players do. This is definitely, like, online at least. I don't see Nabs do it too much, because it's like, who's going to randomly run into a straight course to go forward one, no matter how they're stepping? They step too good at that, at that really high level for, for him to risk doing that. Not to mention, they'll be ready to punish that shit hard. But when you're fighting against people online, even in those red ranks, unless this this whiffs, it'll typically go unpunished unless you abuse it too much. So do this as essentially treat this like it's a hard read on somebody sidestepping to their right and poking you or just sidestepping and not step guarding. This is a hard read for that. And it it's also a, like a whiff punish, a mid whiff punish. And the juggles off of it will lead to more damage than, you know, that as a mid whiff punish. So, right, it's essentially like Jet Upper, right? You can just do this. And so, oh my god. <laughs> Maybe not up close. <laughs> what's his combo? Uh, what's the combo for that after wall standing 3 4? Let's try it. Well, that, that's not a core screw, but. Oh, look at what we got here. We all know I'm not good at that while standing three. <laughs> I 
You have to do the wall standing three uh, as early as possible, it seems like. Otherwise, they're not high enough off the floor. Oh, the jab was too early. Damn it. I'm trying to go a circle back for the uh, two there. I'm just trying to do fancy juggles here. Well, that's 72, but that's not easy to do. That instant while standing 3-4 shit, not easy to do. Um, oops. Oh, that was what I wanted to do, actually. Nope. If you do a jab, that kind of fucks with it. Well, yeah, there's one option. Uh, while standing one, jet upper, back 2-4. What's back 2-4? Oh, I keep forgetting that's back 2-4. No dash, right? Uh, back three forward if you know the drill. <laughs> if you know the drill. <laughs> yes, I do. Oop. Back two four. What is that? So that's while standing one. Next is while standing two. Which is a fisherman slam. Huh, um, so you have to input it as while standing two, forward two. This is the big damage shit, right? I don't know what the juggle is off of this, though. What's the juggle off of this? Anybody know? Really? Oh, okay. I, I, that's the easy shit, I guess. That works. Uh, sure. All right. Keep it easy, right? Look at that. 82 damage. All right. Super easy. That's legit the only one that works. I think there's some fancy shit you could do with that. Like the knee tech, right? Well, knee stole it from somebody else. It's not his tech. He, he credited who he got it from. I forget who. But he credited who he got it from. If your back is to the wall, this is actually a decent tool. If you read a high and your back is to the wall. He's hit this in tournament after he credited the guy. And if people go crazy, it's like, yeah, well... He credited the right guy. It's not knee tech. Now, I don't know how to follow this up, but I want to see if I can recreate the one thing, significant thing about this. Now, I don't know how to do this. Get the dash. Oh, there it is, right? And then what's the follow up? Is it down four into other shit? Or back turn jab? Dick jab. Ah, yes. That's why that's only. I think he always had this, but now that he has that new shit, that's what makes this viable now. Dude, that's crazy. Now your back is away from the wall, and you did 81 damage. Sick. All right, thank you. Damn, that's a lot of damage, considering he had to f do a dick jab as a filler. So, yeah, Fisherman Slam does a lot of damage. But on block... 
It's negative 10. So it's not even that bad on block. It's just slow. That's the only problem with this. 19 frames isn't even that slow. So this is a fucking great move. But now you cannot do the quarter circle forward um, thing because even the dragon off trick fucks it up. He always gets quarter circle forward 2 1. So you can't get quarter circle forward to while standing 3 unless you cancel with back. Like Steve. You have to input it as back too. By the way, you can press back or forward two after it hits. Fake people out by doing the fisherman without the forward two into another fisherman. <laughs> it's only plus three, so I don't think you'll be doing that. <laughs> The DR combo on that shit was so wack. It was like up forward three, jab three, three, four. It did a lot of damage because it was DR, but it was really wack. <laughs> it says GUP. While standing two to GUP. <laughs> GUP. I don't know why it's called GUP. Fisherman upper. But yeah, it's back or forward plus two. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, that's... I missed that part. Oh, my God. This mechanic is still here? Oh, I'm getting flashbacks to Julia. Oh, my God. At least it's not tied to an A-frame counter hit launcher. So, if Brian inputs the follow-up, it's negative 10. If he just inputs while standing 2 by himself, it's negative 8. So, Milo is saying in the chat, do while standing 2, duck while standing 2 as a set. <laughs> to fuck with people that try to block punish it. Gimmick City. Yeah. Gimmick City. That's fucked up, dude. Why would they keep... I thought they were getting rid of mechanics like that. Why would they keep that mechanic? That's such a lame mechanic. There's no visual difference. Alright, whatever. So he has that. That's a lot of damage. For a, only negative 10, that's a lot of fucking damage. That's a great move. That's better than I thought. I, I always wonder why I don't see it more often. I don't know. Whatever. It's negative 10. Big, big whoop. Look how much range you cover when you crouch, when you roll dash into it. Oh, oh. Look at how much range that shit, tra that shit uh, covers. Alright, so now let's test the tracking on it. I'm learning a lot here. This is cool. A lot of cool shit here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm certainly learning a lot. Alright, so. Who gives a fuck about you guys? I'm like. Um, down back four, negative two. All right, so it tracks to his right, uh, his right side. Whoa, what the fuck? Wow, the further away and the more it tracks. This is like one of those dragon off down forward one, down forward one situations. Off of the generic low, it tracks. This is actually worth knowing. If you're one of those people that's like me, who likes to use this and then step afterwards, and you get people to step with you, this shit will catch them totally off guard. That, you know, you risk being countered, sure, but the idea is to get them to step with you, or they just may backdash, and if they backdash, so what? It's negative 10 if you commit. That's not bad. Interesting. Now, I don't think that means that every negative two situation where Brian recovers crouching, it's going to track. I don't think that means that. Um, how about negative four? Oh, I got it backwards because... Okay. Confuse me. Same thing, huh? You can walk it, though. That's a big whiff. If he walks in instead of stepping. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not that big a whiff. <laughs> All right. Big enough. Big enough whiff. To punish with a normal launcher. That's just like a down forward two easily. You'll be a little careful with that, but you'll clip people that just step instead of committing. Mm -hmm. 
Great move, great move. Next we got Wild Standing 3, the classic. 12 frame Wild Standing, counter hit juggle starter, right? And then it has that second hit that he could delay and it's a counter hit knockback. And it would interrupt you if you try to block punish the first hit, which is a negative 10, right? Yeah, negative 10, uh, plus four on regular hit. The second hit is also negative 10, plus four on regular hit. Same thing. But only the first one is a juggle starter. And if you commit to both, it's still a juggle starter. You can still juggle after it. Yes, I know that. Uh, I'm explaining that. <laughs> I'm glad I can help if you're learning anything. This is what I do, man. This is what I do. Take my sweet time. You can't learn a character in a half hour. Unless you already know a lot of the shit about the character. You can't learn a character in a half hour or one hour. And even with what, I, with what I'm doing, which I usually take about six, seven, eight hours to go through a character, you still aren't really going to learn it. You're not going to retain it all, right? So, if he, do, if he delays it, let's see. All right, you exchange. Now, that I didn't know. Without any delay, let's see. Yeah, without any delay, you exchange. Wait, no. Okay, I put a little bit of delay there that one time. Let's try to put as much delay as possible. Definitely interrupt that. 12 frames? Yeah. 13? Yeah. 14? Yep. Uh, what's 15? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you could delay the shit out of that one. <laughs> so if he puts a heavy delay on it, you could kind of go crazy, but you're not going to react to that delay. You're going to swing right after the wall standing three, thinking he's going to delay to get any of that in time. The moment you look for the delay, it's too late. If you look for the delay, other than a jab, it's too late to do anything crazy. See, I tried to jet up her. See, even 12 frames. And he could vary the delay. Uh, going as his Brian has bad defensive options. How would you go about opening up a Brian player? Iron Spire Lord? Spire. Iron Spider Lord. Number one, step guard to your right. Brian's weak side is his left side, but he does have some dangerous stuff that can go in that direction. Like a good Brian player might use this. Crouch the uh, core circle forward one. Uh, but most Brian players tend to use this to stay safe. So, anytime you're pressuring Brian, go to your right more often than not, unless you have a specific reason to go the other way. And if you go the other way, definitely step guard. Don't fully commit. Uh, the thing about opening Brian up specifically is his defensive options are kind of whatever. It's going to be like, this is the big one, right? So, anytime you go low, you have to be worried about this. But until the Brian player proves that he's just willing to throw this shit out there, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And when he does... That's when you fish for it with jabs a lot more often. Because his high crush options suck. If you do a single jab, you'll still be able to block this on reaction in time. Uh, and all you need is a single jab to float a jet up. But this is why a common anti brine stat when it comes to seeing this move, people will just stick out a jab, especially if like a uh, Gigas or a Jack player. Like if you watch uh, Anakin fight against like Mr. Naps or other Brian players, you'll see him stick out the two jab from like this range. And then it's the whole intent is to catch this out of the air. Now, if you're somebody with a normal jab range, you're not going to want to stick out a jab from here. You're going to want to stick it out from up a little bit closer than that. You might even want to, like, do a little dash forward and then jab, not just stand still and jab. You might want to dash a little bit and then jab. Get that extra distance. So just in case he does this, boom, you float him out of the air and you convert off of that one jab on reaction. That's a very key thing dealing with this move. The, ne the neutral jump version. Uh, but in general, Brian's defensive options aren't great. He has to size it with you to, like, make some of his most dangerous counter hit tools track, for example. This is probably the most dangerous one, although it's only zero on, on block. So, uh, don't whiff in front of Brian. Also, watch out for getting this straight, getting hit by straight forward 4-1. That is negative, uh, 13 force crouch on block. But watch out for getting hit by, uh, you know... Did I go over this move? I might, I must have gone over it the first time because I haven't seen this move. Um, 
Don't get hit by straight forward four two. Four four one, sorry. And if he do block it, it's negative thirteen. Um Yeah. And the one thing you gotta remember about Brian is his only knockdown low on normal hit is fucking his launcher. Right? He needs counter hit on this for it to be a big threat. And it is a big chunk of damage when he counter hits. But outside of that, he's got this. 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 Look at the damage that I'm doing with these. This ain't shit. Brian's low suck. This is... If he didn't have this, he, he wouldn't be shit. It, it only mattered in 5.0 because this was plus 1 and this was plus 3 in 5.0. So he didn't have he didn't have this in 5.0, but he had plus three, plus one. Also, this was I think negative ten on in 5.0, and then he had this, which was much more damage I think back then. <clears throat> and uh, be ready to whiff punish uh, this. When you're this distance, this is the other key move to look out for. This isn't opening Brian up. This is beating Brian. Opening a Brian player up, if, if, if when you ask me a question like that, it makes me uh, think that you're thinking too much about offense more so than the matchup, right? Don't think about it as opening. I get what you mean, but don't think about it as opening him up. Like, oh, like, how do I break through his defense? Look at it more like, what is Brian most likely to do when I'm back here? This is, you, There's a big chance you're going to start seeing, like, this move, right? You also might see this move, but this move, it, despite the range, if he does it from back here... You could backdash away from it. You could move around it and get try to get around it. I haven't gotten over this move yet. I will, like, probably next time, not today. Go, go into more detail about the tracking of this move and stuff like that. But if you get this to whiff, that's a big whiff. If you get this to whiff, that's a big whiff. Right? Really big whiffs. You could launch him for both. Be ready to launch his whiffs. Be ready. Be ready. Because this move, you're going to see this fucking move. It's too good for you not to see it. You follow? Yeah, I know. I haven't gone, gone over the quarter circle back moves yet. That's going to be at the end of this move list, which means next time, not today. All right, now I'm just trying to finish the while standing stuff. But yeah, those are a couple of uh, things for you to think about when you find this character. <laughs> okay, so basically, it's play better Tekken than Brian at range zero. Well, I'm not talking about range zero when I talk about this, am I? This is keep out. Right? Think about the moves you're most likely to see and then beat those moves. You're going to see this from back here. You're going to see this from back here. You're going to see this from back here. Otherwise, he's getting your face. When he's in your face, sidestep right. Step guard right, specifically. But but sidestep, uh, favor sidestepping to your right. Your right. And if you step into a button, this could clip you. But if you commit to a full sidestep, you could get around this. This is like the key counter hit tool to look out for, other than Magic 4, which is another keep out tool in general. But up close, he's more inclined to use this. You know? And if he's doing 1-2 pressure, you kind of have to guess. There's no OS that's going to stop uh, stop this because he could delay the safe mid that's a counter hit jungle starter. So because he could delay it, he could make a hit on the same frame as the low, for example. See? There's no way to really tell the difference, other than, you know... Maybe seeing his leg cock back. Maybe. But not really. So be careful about 1-2 pressure. Um, honestly, I don't think it's the worst idea ever to sometimes duck right in Brian's face. Because he doesn't have your standard uh, hop kick, down forward 2 launcher, right? Although even those need like the opponent standing unless it's a counter hit. Think about it, right? The big shit he can hit you with mid is this, but that's slow. Now, I'm not saying you're going to react and stand block. I'm just saying every once in a while, duck for a moment and then stand. Duck, look for a whiff, confirm. Look for a whiff and confirm. Don't just come up with a button every time. Uh, sometimes, yes, but every time, no. And uh, if you confirm that he does like a one-two, for example, go right up into something fast. Something fast. Otherwise, you're going to get gobbled up by one-two-one. One. Don't come up with a launcher every time. If you have a high crushing while standing option, even better. Asuka while standing three, you don't even have to wait. You see a one-two over your head, bam. While standing three, you'll launch him and he'll be pissed. Does any of that help? <laughs> I 
I hope I hope that helps. I want it's a pretty good detail based on what I've gathered from going through his stuff so far. There's probably more things you could tighten up, but you know. So yeah, uh, let me know if there's anything else. Uh, so yeah, we went over while standing three, four, but we haven't gone over the tracking. Boom! Good shit. <laughs> Glad I could help. I take that as a yes. Oh yes, I st uh, while standing three tracks to his left, and then the second one covers him unless you walk, right? Thought so. Oh, no, you can't double step. No, you can't. You have to walk it all the way. Okay. Uh, let's try it down back four. That seems to be a sweet spot for tracking from while standing for Brian. I don't know why. All right, good. So while standing three definitely covers Brian's left side. For sure, a hundred percent. It seems like if you have momentum at zero, then rush him down. Um, I'd say you're gonna rush him down at, at plus one more so than other characters, but not every time. Remember, you always want to think more about what are the moves that are more likely that you're more most likely gonna see when he defends himself, right? You're probably gonna see jabs, right? Because that's a counter hit string. That's a 10 frame counter hit string. And so is that. And if you block the 1 2, he has the built in mix up, right? Should he choose to do it. Otherwise, he's at negative 2, he could do whatever the fuck he wants. So that's why I recommend it sometimes ducking in his face, right? It's more like look out for what he defends himself with. Rush him down for a bit at plus 1 or at 0. Look at what he's defending himself with. More than likely, he's going to use movement to defend himself. The good Bryans. They're going to, like, try to move around and squeak into a perfect position to get one little opening, and then they'll come in with butt with something, you know? Whether it's that or that, if they want something big. Chances are it's either going to be jet upper or something small. Or they're going to backdash and then core circle back. And if they core circle back, you might eat that. And that's a big chunk of damage to eat. I think that's guaranteed, right? It's not guaranteed. That's guaranteed. All right. Well, there's something. <laughs> you wish. So, yeah. How do you deal with each of those moves? Well, this, if he doesn't confirm it, you could duck and launch him. Right? this like i said you could duck and launch them or just come up with something else right but if they try to do the one two four or something well if they try to do one two i think a better answer is you sidestep to your right if they're defending with one two one two tracks to his left one tracks to his left for some reason his one jab just tracks to his left side i don't know why sorry tracks to his right side your left side i don't know why his one jab is like the first time I've run into this. His one jab tracks to his right side, your left. So, a better way of dealing with one, two, like I said this earlier, if you notice that he's defending himself with jab strings, let's go with one, two, one. You have to step into a uh, sidestep right into a fast button to stop this. Otherwise, uh, that's 14 frames. Right. If I try to size up to something slow, ooh, that's unique. I think that I think that avoided that leans. So that's a bad example. Wow. Right. All right. Well, luckily Brian himself has a lot of evasive tools off of sidestep. Let me, maybe I'm not holding forward. That's probably why. Let me try that again. Did it the one two track me before? Or am I crazy? Oh boy. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Well, anyway, point being, because of the mid in the end, I thought the two would track. I don't know why I'm not getting into track now. Uh, but because of the counter hit two in the end, if you see this string coming out a lot, which is common, um, you're going to want to sidestep and confirm it to something fast. See, if I'm too slow, which is, means like sidestep jabs. If I'm too slow, let's, let's try uh, 14 frames. Right? Hold on. Okay, that works. Uh, 15. Uh, down back one. Two. Oh, wow. Yeah, see? All right, so if you're in a situation where you sidestep and you're 100% looking for him to start up offense before you press a button, chances are if you go slow, like 14, 15 frames, there's a chance you're going to be too slow. So you're going to want to go with something fast because of that. In the heat of the moment, right? Your reactions may be great, and you may not have to worry about that. Uh, but another note about that is that's what's a uh, good thing about Magic 4s that are 11 or 12 frames. You could easily, oh, you know, stick that out there. Fangs back one. You know, any fast counter hit uh, move is pretty good in this situation if you think that, uh, you know. Well, one, two, four beats all sidestepping, but it comes out slower. The whole point is you're interrupting the string. See how slow it is? Ugh. See? I can do the slowest shit and interrupt it, no problem. See, I almost got a delayed hog kick to interrupt it. One, two, four comes out very slow. Can you jab and interrupt one, two, one? No, you cannot. No, you cannot. Unless he delays it, you cannot. Did I talk about movement? Yeah, I think it's pretty important for Brian. And then, and, well, I mean, you know, what is it to say about movement? You need to uh, sidestep to realign. This is a, it's a universal thing, movement. You need to sidestep to realign to make some of Brian's really good moves work. This is probably one of the biggest ones right here. But in general, uh, one key thing to bring up about if you're using Brian is if you want to sidestep into jabs, which you're going to need, everybody needs that, you have to sidestep and press forward one. Otherwise, you're going to get sidestep one. You know? And in general, most characters should be holding forward when they jab anyway, unless they have a move that overlaps. Iron Spire Lord, you got counter hit because it's hard to do. Wait, trying what? What are you trying to do? I'm talking about if you sidestep the one two initially, sidestep right, and then he misses the one two and then tries to do the one. You gotta be fast. Basically, you're sidestepping with with the attempt of looking for that specifically. I'm looking for him to start this string. So, but the, the cool thing is, if you're sidestepping into jabs, it could be anything. I'm looking for him to whiff. If I sidestep right, he whiffs. I'm got my fucking jab ready in the back of my mind on reaction. At that point, it doesn't matter, like what move comes out, because your jab, unless it's a high crush, obviously, uh, your jab is gonna beat it out. Right? That's not like you know anti Brian thing specifically. I'm just saying it's extra important here because if you sidestep Brian's one two, this will check you if you're too slow. That mid in the end, and you don't want to get checked by that mid in the end. In the heat of the moment. It's not an easy thing to do, but it goes a long way. Right? Hello, Hattori. Hey, that name sounds familiar. Hattori Hanzo. So, yeah. <laughs> Big brain play. Uh, okay. So we talked about while standing three, four tracks, while standing three tracks to his left side. Next is his while standing four, typical 11 frame while standing four, negative six. I think sometimes they're negative five, but his is negative six on block, plus five on hit, no unique counter hit properties, 16 damage on normal hits, 19 on counter, no unique properties. I said that already. Run up, assess the tracking. Yeah, this is not going to track. Very linear. 
I'm gonna connect that and then try it. Yeah, I didn't think so. Um. Oh. So if you go to your right, even in a situation... Oh, wow. It's, it's finicky because he has to be aligned. All right, let me re-record this. If he hits you on axis, because this move is finicky. It hits you. It moves you off axis when it hits you. Yeah, see? But if you're already off axis, you could get around it. That's what was happening before. That's what's weird about these situations. So if you dash into a down back three, I mean, you're not going to notice a counter hit. But if you feel like you got a counter hit, while standing four is uh, basically something that they have to block. Unless it's armor. I don't know. No, they can't armor it either. Sorry, not enough frames to armor. Right? They can counter if they got a counter, but Brian doesn't. All right. Next is while standing one plus two. This is the 10 frame move I talked about that usually hits on the second frame. So you very rarely see this as a uh, 10 frame move. What the fuck? What language are you speaking? Brian Gembu, best video ever. Big brain. <laughs> Big brain, Brian. The ESLs are out of full force. <clears throat> well, it's all right. I'm not going to make fun of you like Iris does. While standing one plus two is useless. Yeah, I mean, you know. It's the only the only thing, the only noteworthy thing about it is up close, it's uh, 10 frames. That's the only noteworthy thing about it. It is plus seven, and it keeps you in their face when it connects. Well, no, it doesn't. But it keeps you closer than while standing four does, right? That's why it's worth doing, and I have seen me punish with while standing one plus two over while standing four before. And my guess is plus seven instead of plus five, and he's closer. That's why. Look at that. They can still backdash away from that, I'm sure. But they're closer, so it doesn't whiff by default. So, I don't think it's useless. Also, it is less damage, though. Now, yeah, they can backdash that. Now, what happens if he sidesteps right? There it is. See? Look at that. You can't step it to, the, to your right anymore. At all. But left, you probably can. All right, see? Left, you can still step it. You follow? Good punish for Lily back turn one plus two. Oh, yeah, that is negative ten. Yeah, Lily does stay pretty close. So it probably is a consistent negative t uh, ten frames, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, not any Tom Sinister. Not. N I went over this before, but not this one. <laughs> I wouldn't say any. Let's say Gigas down three two on block. That's a good one, because Gigas stays, like, really close to you. He's really big. It'll probably hit on frame 10 there instead of 11. You could do it off of the cross dash, see? Oh, nope. If you do the same trick, it's back to. Uh, watch out for key moves and responses at certain ranges of positions. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like like I said, remember, it's like any other matchup. Characters are going to fight you different depending on the range that they're at, right? You're going to see certain moves from this range that you're less likely to see in this range. Now, you might still see 3 plus 4 from that range, but, you know, you're more likely to see it from this range. Do you get what I'm saying? So... Then it becomes, all right, this specific move. Don't think about the whole move. Let's think about what am I more likely to see. And if I see that, I'm going to keep an eye out for that. And the moment it whiffs, I'm going to get my whiff punish ready. That, that's all that, that means. That's the kind of stuff that will get you beating higher level players. Lower level players, you're going to see dumb shit like this, which you should react to. You're going to see them randomly throwing this out. You know, block that on reaction. You're going to see all sorts of dumb goofy ass shit. They're probably going to do this without hit confirming or any sort of confirmation. So just duck, get ready to duck that. You know, they're going to throw this out randomly. So if you feel like you have a good read on when they throw that out, duck it. Or just do a keep out low, like a Feng Sai Step 4. 
they come in with that, they're going to get hit. Nothing they can do about it. Or even a down back four if you want to get crazy. That's how I've been using Feng's uh, lows. Uh, side step four and down back four. I use it as keep out. All right. So. Next and last for today is the new big move. Full crouch. Down forward four. Now, this is plus 13, guardable, spins out on hits, spins out very far. So, you're not really, well, you can force a mix-up, but how good of a mix-up can you force? Well, let's see. What happens if he follows it up with that? Yep, you can't step it. All of a sudden, a safe mid, that's a counter hit jungle starter. You cannot step it. Can you backdash it? Can't back that shit. Now, let's see about the tip. Yeah, so you got to be cognizant of how close you are when you connect this move. But it is a homing move, right? And it's a counter hit juggle start. Is it a homing move? Sorry, it's not a homing move. Why did I think this was a homing move? It looks like it. Uh, I guess not. Not a homie move, but I'm guessing it tracks well. Uh, it is a counter hit juggle starter, just like forward, forward, four. You do similar juggles, right? Uh, Mansfield gains the host again. Thank you. I got cheesed out by one, two, one, one, two, three, one. Well, yeah. Uh, Iron Cross is negative 10, right? Correct. Foot cross down forward, four is negative 10 on block. See? That was one of the nerfs in the earlier arcade versions of. Uh, uh, what's it called? Not BR. Is it called BR? Bloodline Rebellion? Is that what the Tekken 7 arcade version is called? BR? Or was that Tekken 6 BR? Whatever the fuck the uh, arcade version of this is called. Uh, when they first gave him this move before console, it was safe. Alright, now, here's where I go, where I uh, ask you, Milo, or you Brian players, what's the trick to doing this shit from standing again? There's a trick to do this instantly from standing. Tell me, tell me. There's a weird input you have to do. All right, down, 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 back, down, down, forward, forward. Down, down, back. Wow, that's weird. That way. Down, down, is there any neutral? Or do I have to roll the stick? I get why, because you're trying to avoid a uh, crouch dash and a back sway. Woo! So you need to input this perfectly. You need to in essentially input down, down, back without the bat to avoid the back sway. To go into crouch and then roll it to down and then down forward to do it. And the faster you could do this, you could be like Mr. Naps. Hold up a second. Why is this guy linking me? Hattori XD. I don't know why you're linking me that. What are you linking me this shit for? Uh, uh, don't worry about it. All right, so we're gonna test the. We're gonna try to test the tracking by using this input here. No, I don't need to test the tracking with that. I can just do it with down back three and down back four. Oh, he's shilling his YouTube video. I only got like twenty viewers. <laughs> Uh, all good, all good. I mean, I sell my shit on Aris' chat room, right? Uh, I respect the hustle. I mean, that's how you gotta do it. That's how Young P got his viewers, right? Yeah, so this track's really well, and it's 15 frames, so I wouldn't use it as a 15 frame punisher, but... If you happen to hit with a counter hit down back three, that's a good follow-up, I guess, if they press something. And they can't backdash it in time. I mean, they can block it, but they can't backdash to make it whiff, is what I'm saying. Now, it is a high... No, it's not. What the fuck am I saying? It's a mid. <laughs> it is a mid. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. This shit has a lot of range. You could step guard it pretty well. But this is a fucking dangerous move. This is a really good move. Man. 
Imagine if this shit was still safe on block and you could still do that trick. Try that negative two. I mean, you, you think about it. People that screen second, that's how they get big, right? They get the, uh, they either screen snipe Aris or Aris shouts them out somehow. Like, main man used to write, uh, write stuff for Aris's website. And then Aris just shot him out. Also, main man was one of those people that were, like, that was, like, making a ton of videos about how to do all the hard Mishima stuff. <sighs> Alright, so this is a fucking good move. If you're a Brian player, you're gonna want to practice that input for sure. You're gonna want, you're gonna want to practice that shit. Look at that. It fucking, it bas it's basically a homing move, and it's you know you get a wall splat. Great fucking move, and it, of course it's gonna crush highs because you're ducking. So really, really, really good move. It goes without saying. All right? Can you sidewalk it? No, you can't even start to step it. So you cannot sidewalk it. Look, I recorded again. Oh, is that the same one? See, I'm putting him at negative two. I'm trying to sidewalk. Can't. No, neither direction. You could step guard it, though. And the thing about it is it's negative uh, ten on the dot with very little uh, block uh, stun. So you have to react the instant that you block it. You have to react. In the heat of the match, if it comes out in like out of the neutral, if you know that trick, if it just comes out, if it just comes out and you know that you know that trick. It's like there are times where it goes unpunished. Uh, you know, it's it's very weird. There are times where even good players will miss the punish if they're not expecting it because you're not crouching. So the better you get at doing it, which I'm not, but obviously it's something if you're a Brian player, you're going to want to practice. The better you get at that, the better that shit, like, you know, they'll basically you ensure that if they see any sort of duck, there's a chance that they'll stand still. But if they get sloppy, they'll get clipped. And you could just duck it and stand just to fuck with them. <laughs> duck stand. <laughs> if you're so inclined, you know. Unfortunately, Brian doesn't have a low from full crouch. 